So getting quality sleep is as important to you being healthy as a balanced diet or even regular exercise. Like we always think we've got to eat right, we've got to exercise, but really sleep is the most important thing. And if if you're not sleeping your best, it's probably time to replace your mattress. At a sleep number store, you can see and feel how a sleep number mattress adjusts to you for just right comfort every night. You know, does your bed do that now? The sleep number bed lets you choose your ideal comfort on each side. So it's the perfect bed for couples. Optional sleep IQ technology inside lets you track your sleep, gives you personal insights. You can see how life affects your sleep and how sleep affects your life. My sleep number is a 30. My sleep IQ score last night was in the high 80s, but that changes, and I always know and can look at it and change my life depending on how I sleep. Go into a sleep number store and see the difference. Save $400 on their most popular P5 Queen mattress right now. You'll only find a sleep number at any of the 500 sleep number stores nationwide. Find the one nearest you by calling 800-NEXT-BED, and when you go in, tell them you heard it on the Bobby Bones Show. Bobby Bones, everybody. Transmitting. Across America. Good morning, welcome to Thursday's show. Good morning, studio. Good morning. A lot of people put on weight because they don't even realize they're doing it. If they eat while they watch TV, they don't realize what they're eating while they're watching TV. Oh. Do you snack while you watch TV? Uh, it's the only time I eat is when I watch TV. I mean, I eat dinner in front of TV. I eat snacks in front of the TV. I mean, if the t- if I'm eating, the TV's on. But is the TV if the TV's on? Are you eating? That's the question. No, not necessarily. But I do snack when I'm watching TV. Or yeah, you? Yeah, I feel like when I'm watching TV, it's more mindless eating sometimes, and you you end up consuming more than you would have otherwise. Yeah, people consume up to seventy one percent more food while they're watching TV. Yep. Without even knowing it, without even know it's like liquids. Like you don't. A lot of times you get a lot of bad stuff from liquids. It's like why waste your calories on just yeah. drinking stuff unless it's alcohol. I now, mean, I don't drink can, alcohol. You but, can say it's wasting it, but it, I don't think it's wasting what alcohol. No, like, no, I'm I'm not counting alcohol. Oh. That's what I'm saying like alcohol, it makes you feel different. I don't drink, so I don't know. What the, but, but alcohol makes you feel. Re- but if you're way. saying like a Coke is yeah. 120 calories, like eat a cupcake instead yeah. of a Coke. Mm. Oh yeah, way worth it. Yeah. I'd rather have the cupcake for sure. Way more. Tomorrow at this time, we'll debut that new Thomas Rhett and Marin Morris song. I have a clip of it. It's called Craving You. You like that cigarette that's out of hundred proof. No matter how much I get, I'm always craving that feeling when we kiss. The way your body moves. No matter how much I get, I'm always craving you. That's all. Tomorrow we'll have the world premiere of that. Man, what a tease. I know, right? Man. Bobby Bones. Recognizing people doing cool things. It's ICU. All right, I got something for you Thursday. The Richmond Fire Department has raised close to $50,000 after a fellow firefighter, Cortland Lambert's three-year-old son Caleb, was diagnosed with stage three neuroblastoma in February. Lambert, a 15-year firefighter and dad of three, informed his colleagues that his son had cancer. The station began fundraising. Fifty thousand dollars, and they all shaved their heads in honor of Caleb. Wow. That's Whoa. the money they raised, and that's what they did, as like to show unity. Isn't that's that awesome. awesome? So I see you, Richmond Fire Department, for sure. I see you, the Bobby Bones Show. Big three stories. It's producer Raymond near the Capitol in Washington D.C. A suspect was taken into custody after apparently driving erratically and hitting other cars. Luckily, no one was injured, and she's in jail. In recall news, Ford has recalled 570,000 vehicles for fire risk, also issues with closing the doors. All affected models are listed online. And finally, Samsung unveiled their new phone, the Galaxy S8. The phone will be about $750. What'd you do yesterday? Oh, you want to hit the tote board? Oh, you sleep all day? (laughs) Hit the tote board. (laughs) Oh... I did not take a nap, but I definitely was in my bed for three hours. Wow. Why? Yeah. I don't, I don't, I couldn't get, I just was in a funk. Like, I was just in a funk. And, I mean, I made some phone calls while I was there. I caught up on social media. Like and monthly stuff? No, I feel like I'm rounding that. I don't know if I'm just on a downhill from, like, having left the kids and I wasn't fully processing it from last weekend and then just some family stuff. I don't know, literally. One of my friends, like... She called me, got me out of the funk, and I finally got out of bed and went to the grocery store and did it. Yay! 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 Yeah. Uh, what about you? 
I went to yoga yesterday and kicked a girl in the face. What? Didn't mean to. And I haven't been to yoga in a while, but I went and you're so packed tight in this class. Yeah. And I turned over, boom, right in her face. Mm. And I was like, oh, and I guess it's just kind of acceptable. Yeah. It's fine. It happens. And then in this class, they make you like touch each other and like like lean on each other and put your hands on each other's backs and, you, and it's all sweaty. Ew. I know. I'm a germaphobe. Like crazy too. I did that. That's all I can think about all day long. Even as I went to bed last night, I was I thinking bet. about that. It was, yeah. This is the Bobby Bones Show. All right. Time for your good news. The segment's called Tell Me Something Good. Tell me something good. There's a woman named Sandra. She's working at a salon. She walked outside and she heard like a crash. So she walks over to the crash and she's like, what's happening here? She sees like a fence down, a big pile of dirt. Then she sees a truck. Then she sees a guy in the truck laying beside it. The guy that was driving the gravel truck had passed out from choking. I guess he was eating, choking, lost consciousness, drove into the pole. She saw him, grabbed him, called 911. He lived. Like she just happened to walk out there Ooh, right wow. after the wreck. So like, much that goodness. is crazy. Amy? Okay, well, some students and alumni at a high school, they raised $17,000 to send their social studies teacher to the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall to honor one of his friends. Wow. Like, one of the students that spearheaded it, like, had this guy as a teacher 16 years ago, and he always remembered wow. that he wanted to go. So they started a GoFundMe. They surprised him with this. It's super cool. Wow, that is. Wow, wow, wow. Lunchbox. Better late than never. A 92-year-old man from North Carolina receives the Purple Heart he earned in World War II wow. more than 70 years ago. 92? Yep. Whoa. Uh, Oscar Davis Jr. was injured in World War II, and I guess the paperwork, someone forgot to sign it, so it just sat in a folder for oh my years. Oh, wow. And they finally did some research, got it signed. Got him the Purple oh, Heart at 92. 92. That's, that's crazy. Better late than never. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. See, that's good news I'm talking about. Bobby Bones. Bobby Bones Show. Here are my headlines this morning. Number one, the Grease 40th anniversary reunions in the works. Olivia Newton-John is revealed she'll be joining force with John Travolta. And I don't know what they're going to do. Are they going to do a, a new movie, a remake? I just saw a reunion. I don't know. Be awesome. Yeah, I liked Greece. I was in Greece in mm-hmm. high school. I was Danny Zuko. Oh, yeah. that was really yeah. good. You can take your morning coffee break outside. It will help you stay thin. Okay. A, a study at Northwestern University found that people who get the majority of their daily sunlight before noon are thinner. Because sun does that to you. Okay. Dutch town installs traffic lights on the ground to alert textures. I've heard of this in other countries. It's brilliant. Mm-hmm. It does cost money, and that's the problem is that nobody's got money. But they've put lights on the ground, so if you're looking at your phone, it's easier to look at a red or green light, so you don't, or the little man. Yeah, you don't even so you have don't to look walk up in front of traffic. <laughs> and it's it is a little bit about being lazy, but too, it's we get distracted. Yeah. And I don't sometimes I don't look up, <laughs> but I'm telling you, I don't go walking a lot of places either. But I almost hit people sometimes because they're just walking when they shouldn't because mm-hmm. they're on their phone. The new it trailer has landed. It looks scary. I couldn't even watch it. Yeah, Mike D and I were doing a Bobby cast yesterday about the top five scary movies of all time. Yeah. And he was, he, you liked it a lot, right? Yeah, it's good. Is that a clown? Yeah, it's creepy. So that's there. That happened yesterday. And then I saw one more story that I wanted to mention. The original Aunt Viv. By the way, because the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, they did a reunion. Uncle Phil couldn't be there because he died. Yeah. The first Aunt Viv is not there because Will Smith fired her after. That's why they changed. Oh. He, he hated her. They hated uh. each other. So the new they switched out. Remember, a new mom came in. Yes, Aunt Viv, new Aunt Viv, and so the original Aunt Viv was on Facebook yesterday, and she went on a whole tirade about how she still hates Will Smith and Will Smith fired her. And, and even Alfonso, she went. It's off not on a him. real reunion, and he's really? a media. Yeah, yeah, and that he just basically is a Will Smith brown noser. Yeah, I mean, I mean, but I, she said it. I would be too. Nice he was words. I Am Legend. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Here's Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Nope. He was getting jiggy with it. Yeah. Come on. The Bobby Bone Show. Here's the latest from Nashville and Hollywood. Amy's 30 Second Skinny. So there's a professional odds maker named Jim Murphy, and he posted the latest odds for the upcoming ACM Awards. So when you want to bet, these are the people that are favored to win. Yeah. Okay, Entertainer of the Year. Luke Bryan. Okay, I can see where he'd be the favorite. Okay, yes. uh, how about male vocalist? Keith Urban. Ooh, that's tough. I, I would probably think Stapleton wins, but mm-hmm. man. Well, he's got it's Keith a tough Urban one. down. Yeah, I, 
Oh, well, and then for female vocalists, That's he's got... Be Carrie. Yep, Carrie Underwood. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then vocal duo, uh, Florida Georgia Line. You know, Brothers Osborne won the CMA for that oh, last good, year. Oh, good call. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I think they're probably more respected... But Florida Georgia Line has more hits. I think Florida, Florida Georgia probably wins it, but th- I think that'll be close. Who do you think he has for vocal group? I always think Zach Brown Band mm-hmm. because they're. I think they're the best. But Little Big Town gets a lot of votes. And one of those, I, I'm not even sure if Zach Brown Band's up for it. It's the weird thing. So probably Little Big Town. Yep, he's got Little Big Town down. And then album of the year, he's got Marin Morris's Hero. So those are the odds for this weekend. Uh, the Academy Awards have made a major change to avoid, you know, the whole moonlight mistake that happened this year. A third accountant will be hired to double check every single envelope. And then they'll be in direct contact with the show's director to make a quick correction if needed. Mm, well, mm-hmm. I, why couldn't they use the second one to double check and have the first one just check? Well, now they got they a double, double checker. All right. <laughs> I'm Amy. That's your 30 Second Skinny. It's the Bobby Bones Show. <laughs> okay, Lunchbox. Are you ready over there? I'm ready. I'm looking at some of the ratings here. People are really loving the bonehead lately. I'm good. I'm. It's been on point. You've been knocking them. This last couple of weeks, you've been knocking them out of the park. You got your new chair. It's Lent, so you're not watching Street Fights. Ugh. So you got to keep it up. Because if it starts to sag, like ratings, then... Well, that's a lot of pressure for this one. Here we go. Bobby Bone Show. Bonehead. Story of the day. This story comes to us from Tucson, Arizona. Okay, I like that place. A man broke into a school, was stealing some computers. When one of the teachers showed up early, he was like, "Uh uh-oh, better get out of here. Runs, tries to jump the fence. Only problem is he has some saggy pants, gets him caught on the fence, literally got caught on the fence, hanging upside down. He's in his whitey tighties, too. (laughs) So they took a picture of him, then they called police. Oh, in that order, too. Oh, man. Uh, I'm Lunchbox. That's your bonehead story of the day. I like it when you sell it to the good old man. You know, because he's like, oh, oh man. that's good. See? When did I do that? Uh, just now. There oh, is it was just natural. Oh, it was. Yeah, okay. it's a good story. There you go. There's your bonehead. Bobby Bones, everybody. Transmitting across America. This is Bobby Bones Show. Come on, Bobby. There are a lot of birthdays today. Like, for our celebrity birthdays, Thomas Rhett is 27 today. So, happy birthday, Thomas Rhett. Here's what I have for you. I'll give you the artist whose birthday it is today. Tell me their most downloaded song ever. Oh, oh that's easy. easy. Okay. Sure it is. Hey, bass, so cute. It's so easy. Yeah. All right. Doesn't sound easy to me. All right. Uh, Thomas Rhett, 27. What is his most downloaded slash streamed song? Write it down, please. Since it's so easy. Oh. This one probably. So easy. It's so crazy. easy. I'm in for the win. Thomas Me too. Rhett, 27, right? Man, can you really think of it? It's easy, Amy. Give me a hit. No. no. Three seconds. Time. Amy has no answer written down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> lunchbox. Die a happy man. This one yeah. is. By far. Eddie? Die a happy man. This was his career song to this point. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, tomorrow will debut a new one. So yeah. This game is so easy. This game is so easy. <laughs> so easy. Okay. Okay, Justin Moore has a birthday today. Yep. This is a little more difficult. Oh. He got a lot of songs. Nope, I got it. Really? Yep. Can't think of the titles. Justin Moore is 33 today. What is his most downloaded stream song? I'm in for the win. I'm in. Amy. You look like I need a drink. Lunchbox. <laughs> Small Town Boy. <laughs> Eddie. Small Town Saturday Night. Oh! oh I, I the, you, yes. the answer is Small, Small Town, Town USA. USA. Oh, yes! No. Oh. You, all, you all missed it. I know. It. I'm glad he missed it. Once I said boy, I was like, that's not right. But, Small Town USA. Yeah. Saturday, Saturday Night. Saturday night. Saturday night. Oh, come on. Saturday. Yeah. Sorry about that. All right. How about half a point? Let me check over here. Uh, can we, judges, can we have a point? No. <laughs> okay, all right. Now, also having a birthday today, Tracy Chapman. Oh. Tracy oh. Chapman. I'm in. I'm in it's a random for one. the win. Birthday. It's her birthday. Yeah, I know, it's so random. <laughs> Amy. Fast car. Lunchbox. Fast car. Eddie. Fast car. So remember when we were driving, driving in your car, speed so fast, it felt like I was drunk. Okay. Eric Clapton has a birthday today. Oh, boy. Today, March 30th, is Eric Clapton's birthday. What's his most downloaded stream song ever? Oh, as a solo artist, right? Yeah. Okay. He was in a group? 
He yeah. was Cream. He was in a couple of them. I have a lot of them. Somewhere he just played guitar, somewhere he sang. Yeah. Okay, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in for the win. Amy. You look wonderful tonight. Lunchbox. Tears from heaven. Eddie. Tears in heaven. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh! Te Tears, Tears in, in heaven. heaven. Yeah! Lunch, you're so close, though, dude. I'm proud of you. If I saw you in heaven. Man. Also a having a birthday today is Celine Dion. She turns 49. Oh. What's Celine Dion's most downloaded streamed yep. song? <laughs> I'm in, I'm in for the win. Amy? My heart will go on. Lunchbox? My heart will go on. Eddie? My heart will go on. My heart will go on. Yeah. yeah. That's Titanic song. Oh, yeah. All right, one more. Celebrity birthday today, MC Hammer. I'm in. Most downloaded stream song. Oh, dude. I'm in. I am in for the win. Amy? Can't touch this. Lunchbox? Too legit. Too <laughs> legit to quit. Hey, hey. Eddie? Can't touch this. Can't touch this. Hey. Oh, 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 oh. Can't, can't touch, touch this. this. 55 years old. Wow. My, 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 my. Can't my. touch this. Hey, that was a jam. I just have this tape. Please hammer don't hurt him. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I used to know all the words too, like because I would be like, I used to like look at words, and memorize all of them. So I'd be the cool kid at school that knew all of them. So I'd be like, can't touch this. Come on, what you got? I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't have music. Can't touch this. I mean, I don't even know if I'm really in the mood, but if I go like this, you can't touch this. Music hit me so hard, it makes me say, Oh my lord, thank you for blessing me with my do I that do right thing. Now, ooh, when you know you're bad, a super dumb homeboy from the hometown I know and such. And this is the thing, oh, you can't touch. Good. That is that really awesome. good. I didn't know all those songs. Pretty I still like good. memorize them. People love that right there. You just crushed it. <laughs> <laughs> like that was good. It's my dude over there appreciating me. Thanks. It's my dude lunchbox. Oh, oh yeah, your dude lunchbox. Oh, boy, that gets people going yeah. in the morning. Thanks, man. Man, hey, who won? Oh, did, oh did. let me stop the music. Did you win, Eddie? Yeah. You always win music games, baby. Come on! <laughs> Okay. Now I'm tired. <laughs> Where's you out? I gotta get some water. I gotta, I gotta regroup. <laughs> Lady Annabelle will be in later this morning. Amy has a tote that she carries around. And what a tote is, it's a bag, goes over your shoulder. Are you guys familiar with this tote? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so she had it specially made by a friend of hers. And so as a birthday present, she sends her a tote and it has four things on it. Let's play guess the words. Do you know what's on it already? No. No okay. idea. So it's like four things that are important to Amy. Oh, okay. So okay. what do you think they are? Go ahead. Yoga. Yoga makes a list. There you go. That's on her toe. She has wow. four important things. Hmm. Yoga is one of them. Yep. Go ahead. Joy. I don't think Joy made the list, huh? Well, Pimp and Joy made it. Yeah, but that, that's, that doesn't count. Yeah, that doesn't count. Uh, We're trying to play a game. Sorry, yeah. I'm going to change my oh, Pimp and Joy. Yeah. Eddie, you can now change your like judges. Like, say, go ahead. Perfect. Pimp and Joy. Yeah, there you I go. Feel like oh, Joy that. I feel like the judge should give uh, him that. Yeah, Lunchbox. Well, Haiti? Oh. Amy? Uh, Haiti not on there. No. You want to give me a hint like you did, Eddie? <laughs> uh, I got one. Go ahead. Bobby Bone Show. Ooh. No, sadly, oh, no. Oh, oh I know, I know. Go ahead. Husband. No. Uh, wow. No. But, but. I don't want to say it. Oh, I I know. Know. oh Dirk's yeah. Bentley? Yes. That's terrible. Husband's not on there, Dirk's is. <laughs> on Amy's tote, she has <laughs> Pimp and Joy, Dirk's Bentley, Yoga, and and what's what's something else Amy loves? Smoothie. Uh, juice. Juice. Uh, Whatever they're I called. feel like since we gave Eddie joy, we will give Lunchbox green juice. Yeah, that, those are the four important things in your life. No, I, my <laughs> yes, friend yes, made her, it. No, I didn't ask Amy. for these four things. <laughs> so someone made it for her. Lunchbox, so we're going to make it for you since you're my boy, right? All right. <laughs> Let's see. I will pick naps. Bam. <laughs> Soccer. Yeah. Yeah. Recycling. Yes, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Ooh, and I got to pick one more. Teen Mom. 
Boom. Ooh. That would be the toad I would make for you. Mm-hmm. Okay. What I would do for you. Oh, will you do it for me? I'm going to do it for dude you. My dude over there. Let's talk my dude. I'm going to do it for you. Go ahead. <laughs> Dusty. Dusty, my dog. Correct. What else you got? Yeah. Work. Oh, dude, oh. I do love a good good day at work. Yep. <laughs> hmm. On time. Punctual. You know what? You're making it for me, so I got to accept it. Go ahead. And last but not least, dork. Well, that's not nice, but okay, we'll take it. Wow. That's, and that's coming from your boy. No, no. Hey, my boy's honest with me all the time. Yeah. That's, that's one thing we do. We oh, keep it real with wait, each other. Wait, wait. Can you, I take off dork? What would you put instead? New York Times bestseller. I'd probably go with that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah see? Yeah, he always comes through. That. Eddie, oh, wait, wait. St- Funny and Alone? Nah. You got that tour will change. After we finish Funny and Alone and shoot the special, it'll be a new tour. Oh, okay, yeah. Let's not put that on. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> got you. Eddie. What? For you, I would put. Yeah. Dad. Yeah. Mexican. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um. <laughs> music. Guitar, uh, no. Beach. Yeah. The beach. Yep. Yeah. And then. Ah, uh, this is a big one. And then for, oh, you have one you're thinking about? No, no, no. I mean for you. Mm. So Eddie on his tote. <sighs> so far you have Mexican, mm-hmm. beach, mm-hmm. and what was the first one? Dad. Dad. Yeah. I love music. You just. How about. Man, uh, dad bod. Okay, so. <laughs> daddy and dad bod. <laughs> I mean, it's your tote, so you what, what do you have? It's your tote. <laughs> like he's a legend in his neighborhood. That's right. Yeah, but that's the new. Legend. That's new. You're not a legend. You say that about yourself. Uh, you can't. You skateboard in your neighborhood. You right. can't say that about yourself. Okay. Pizza. Oh, pizza. Pizza. Oh, pizza. Yeah. I go with pizza. Yeah. <laughs> pizza. All right. <laughs> Terrible tote. There, there it is. Pizza. <laughs> in a little bit, what you would call a headhunter, someone who comes after people for a job has come after Lunchbox. Like, they've approached him about a different job. Whoa. Yeah, so we'll talk about that in the next 20 minutes or so, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> that, I mean, it's, it's a little scary, but I always think if you have a better opportunity, you should go for it. Right, you want us to soar. Absolutely. Like, if there's something that comes along and you guys are like, this is for me, go do it. So there's that. That'll come up in a bit. I got a call from my doctor yesterday, right? My doctor's like, hey, I got your, your blood work. And so I've been worried about this because he didn't call for like two days. And I was like, oh, something must be wrong. Like, he must be figuring out the way to tell it to me gently. Yeah. Because that's what doctors do, right? Don't they like hold off and like figure out the way to say it nicely or no? I guess. Depends on their bedside manner. Mm. Drink a water because he told me that I have to drink more water. Really? He's like, first of all, he said, you are healthy as a horse. Oh, that's good. Mostly. So he starts off like, you're very healthy. I'm a little, I'm underweight a bit. A, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. We saw that. What do you mean? Well, we, we saw, we've seen that you've lost a little too much weight. For a reason, though. Yes. And he was like, I know I can't change that, because if, um, if this TV project falls through, this whole show that we've been working on for a while, then I'm going to put on like 10 pounds and just live life at a healthier weight. But I'm super thin right now because you do look thicker on TV. So I lost some weight. Hey, yeah. what are you going to do? Don't have to drink water, by the way. <laughs> mm. So he says, okay. You are a little thin, a little underweight, but you know that I know that. You need to start eating fish eggs. What? What? Like fish caviar? Eggs? Row. Fish, fish oil? Fish oil. Okay. Eat okay. fish oil. Yeah. What's fish oil? Well, it's like omegas, your omega fatty acids. You could probably eat some salmon, too, or something. Is it a pill? You yes. can take in it's pill, a pill. form That's or okay. liquid. That's okay. So yeah. it's a it's a supplement. Sure. So you got to take that because my, my cholesterol is a little high. Okay. And the bad cholesterol. Like, so I don't know that's good. me too, dude. I don't know if it's bad cholesterol or good cholesterol. But you don't eat bad. It's I don't. So weird. I don't. He said a lot of it's predisposed genetic. Wow. Okay. And then and then I have to take vitamin D. I'm a little low on vitamin D. Oh, get out in the sun. And he's like, because you're underweight, like it messes with like your hormones and stuff, like just generally. Oh. And so I guess huh. if I put on some more weight, I'll be down to get down. You know what I'm saying? Even yeah. more. So so down to get down for what? Wow, wow, wow. Oh, so your hormone that hormone's low? I guess. Your dude. testosterone? You got the low T? Well, I remember I was oh, talking man. about that on the yes. air. I was like, I wonder if I have low T. And I don't. It's in the middle. It's like, okay. it's oh, normal. Borderline. But I was like, I need a high, baby. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. So what do you do for that? You get you take vitamin D? <laughs> Nothing yet, but I take vitamin D. Then you told me some other stuff I didn't understand. And I was like, all right, I wonder how long this is going to last. Me taking pills isn't good because I don't ever remember. Oh, well, set a clock. <laughs> 
I did get my blood test back. Healthy as a horse, mostly. Good. You can get a pill box and a pill timer. Yes. You know what? Yeah. I'm 36. I'm about to be 37. <laughs> pill box time. What's happening is I'm starting to be an adult man of the adult things. And he's like, you have to start looking out for like heart disease. Yeah. And he lectures me on how heart disease is like the number one killer. And I'm like, I'm just yesterday I was 21. Yeah, yeah I know. Me too. What's happening to us? I don't know. Time marches on, man. Ray wants me to go Vegas, uh, to Vegas and gamble for him. Yeah, if I give you some money, will you spend it on the roulette wheel? Here's the problem. I don't gamble anymore. I had a gambling problem. I had to stop. Yeah, but it's not your money. Yeah, it's Ray's money. It's I want to bring this back up in a second. Okay. Because if I do it, I don't do anything in moderation. Anything. Well, if you run out of Ray's money, you're done. No, I'm not. I go get my money. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Well, then it sounds to me like... Do we... Uh, think about that for a second. Okay. I want to come back. I want to tell you what. Lunchbox is being headhunted for a job, and Lady A is going to come in, too. So we got a nice show today. Solid B plus show. I'm not gonna yeah. lie to you. You want to share with them? I uh, yeah. I, I mean, I've never experienced this in my life. I thought this was a joke, but this headhunter came to me, and they are looking to hire me away to become a um, youth referee for soccer here in uh, the area. They said that I would be working uh, the youth leagues, and it's uh, fifteen dollars per game. So let's not hire you away then. Well, I mean, because said he was getting, wanted to get hired away. I thought it was like away from the show. Well, I mean, that's what this is. Do you understand where referees can go? I mean, you can work your way oh. up the ladder, and they just say they've seen me on the field and they think I'd be perfect for this position, mm-hmm. and they want to, you know, they would like to meet with me about um, becoming a youth referee from if- ages three to twelve year olds. Wow. <laughs> so, wait. why would you not become a regular referee though? Can't you go to school for that? That'd be cool. Yeah, you could go to the World Cup. Well, yeah, you got to start out in the youth league. I don't think you do. I think you go to school to be a referee. It's like to be a college football coach, you don't start out in Pee Wee's. You can't oh. just start refing World Cup games. That's why you go to school. And no, you move I'm up. telling you. So you get a certificate or something? Yeah, and then you can start doing games at like that low collegiate level and work yeah. your way up that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I think you should do that. would be good for you. Here's the thing, too, about Lunchbox. He always complains because he has ne- never has anything to do. He's like, oh, I just want to get out there and do more because Bobby's always doing stuff. Amy's always doing stuff. I have an incident or two or four of people asking you to do stuff, and you keep saying no. I don't think I really ever say no. Who? Was it Nada? Mor- Morgan? Yeah, it was what, me. So, okay. Nada had this thing at Vanderbilt University, and she mm. asked Lunchbox if she if he wanted to go fill in because it was like, what, what was the thing? So they they had asked if any one of us wanted to do like a celebrity like honorary judge for this like – um, thing that they do there, like a thesis competition. Okay. And they wanted somebody from radio to come in and and judge. When? Why did you say no? I was busy that day. I don't. I don't Mm-mm. know. It hasn't happened. No. Yet. It hasn't. <laughs> hasn't happened <laughs> yet. That busy day. that day. <laughs> all we're saying is, you mm. sit here and you say all the time like you want to do more stuff, but when you get the opportunity, you never do more stuff. Well, no, no, I do do more stuff, but like you do like books and like. But do you know so why? Like, I, a TED you know, talk. like you do a TED talk. You do like, books. I, I mean, <laughs> I'm gonna do a thesis. But that's what I used to do. You like, know, you, well, I mean, you ju- you're judging. You're you're showing up. You're being active. You're meeting people that let you do other things. Yep. It's it doesn't. You don't just go write a book. Do you know how many years of you do books? <laughs> oh, I don't understand because you said that you have to start somewhere with refereeing. You can't just go straight to the World Cup. This is the same deal. You just have to start somewhere, and then you become Bobby. If you take your nap, for example, let's go to the toe board. How long did you nap yesterday? Man, morning? yesterday was rough. 51 minutes. 51. That's a lot. No, that's not a lot. 51 minutes? That's under an hour. You realize that. That's not very much. You realize that? I didn't until he okay. told me. Yeah. That. yeah. Uh, under an hour in case you didn't. And so, it, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I try to do things, but napping... What, I, what gets in the way, really? I mean, just I, a lot of things. Life, napping, running errands... Uh, Poop tosses. Uh, TV, soccer. So you just don't want to. No, no, no. I, it's not that I don't want to. I do I do, do some things. Like It's just not all these things fit in my schedule. Sometimes they're at a bad time. Huh. Mm. Okay. Like, well, I what mean, time would, would you like us to find you things to do? Well, What's a good time? Yeah, because yeah, yeah, I'll it, find you things to it, do. It, it. Let's be real. Uh, man, when you get paid, it makes it a lot more... Uh, That's the part. You don't get paid forever. It's like radio. Dude, I got paid nothing for the first eight or nine years. Like minimum wage. Right. Like when, I mean, I used to go judge talent shows at high schools. I mean, I was trying, but then they did the invites kind of just quit coming. Because you were a bad judge. Because you didn't care. You'd show up late. <laughs> you'd leave early. But I was there. I was ah, present. Okay. And so 
I have to. I'm just gonna stop looking for you things. No, no, you can keep looking. Like, look at this, a headhunter. That's how important I am, a headhunter. So obviously, I'm doing something right if a headhunter came after me. Okay. For you to co- ref three year old soccer at fifteen bucks a game. What headhunter came to you? I no, did. No, I went. I went hired her. Okay. Yeah, Thanks I a mean, lot. but I'm okay. I'm not, I'm not looking for other. Jobs like that. Amy but I does guess, a podcast. I know. Yeah. I know. See, I don't do a podcast. I don't know. Well, I guess they look, came to me. And you've tried. Unless you can do anything you want. You have all the equipment up here. All you have to do is go to make. Okay, can I do a podcast? Next thing you know, the lunchbox. Lunch, what would I lunch do? On my, I don't even know what I'd do on my podcast. It'd be pretty interesting, and I don't know how to put it up. But uh, yeah, sorry about that non-judging thing. I couldn't do it. But yeah, if you get it hasn't happened oh, yet. You couldn't do it. Hmm. It still can happen. Yeah, not, send something my way if you got something, Bob. Okay, so- okay <laughs> never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's frustrating. It's frustrating. Yeah. He, he always talks about what he wants to do. He never does it. All I right. want to do a lot of things. Yeah, what would you like? One thing. What would you like to do? Real quick, go. Snow cone stand. Okay. <laughs> so, Lunchbox was talking about someone coming to him, a headhunter, he says, and wants him to referee ages 3 to 12 in soccer. He made me think it was like something like a real job. It wasn't. And so he says, I'm paying 15 bucks a game. And it could turn into something big, like he could move up in the world of refereeing. Uh, Amy's on Amarillo. Hi, Amy. How are you? Hi, I'm great, Bobby. Thanks for having me. Uh, thank you for calling. Would you like to shed some light on this? Well, yeah, I'm super excited. I love Lunchbox, and my kids do too. However, I hate to um, like put a damper on his ego, but like my 12 year old has the opportunity to do the same thing. Um, there, honestly, there's so many soccer games, and they're so desperate for refs. And parents of like three and five year olds are not very nice, and so they always need refs. And so, like my son was talking about, he'll be not playing club soccer next year, so he'll have more time to do it. So he's going to sign up to do that next year. So even twelve year olds are getting the same offer that Lunchbox is getting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no slam against lunch. We love his passion for soccer. Oh man. So you're telling me a headhunter, man, this must be a talented 12 year old. Oh, that's how you see it. That's what I thought. (laughs) Amy, what about that? Is your 12 year old extra super special? Um, he's super special, but I guarantee, in my eyes, but I guarantee that the minute he says, yeah, I'll rest, they'll say okay, and they're not going to ask to see his soccer skills. Okay. Well, hey, thank you for the call. Of Listen, course. I always love a different perspective on things. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Good luck, Lunch. Thanks. <laughs> Good luck, Lunch. <laughs> That's funny. Here's what I'm going to ask you guys in a minute, okay? I want to know what song you have in your iPhones. If there's any, you may have none, that you have on repeat right now. Because yesterday I probably listened to this song like seven times. I, I put it on my Snapchat yesterday. I'd never heard it, but what I, I was listening on iHeartRadio to Ryan Seacrest because he comes on. They're after us, yeah. right? And so like hours, so I can hear that. They hear a show live sometimes. And so I flip over because I try to hear some of the po- – what happened was yesterday. I don't know who Black China was. Yeah. And I was like, I got to start uh, getting somewhat into this knowing Pop who culture. Black China is again. Yeah. And so I was listening to Ryan Seacrest, hoping they talk about Black China. They didn't. Oh, they didn't talk about mm, how? No. Oh. They didn't talk about Black China at all. Like z- zero, okay. z- zero comments about Black China. Okay. But they played this song, and I was like, wow, this is a really cool song. It was on repeat all day yesterday. So if there's a song you have on repeat, I want to know what it is. We'll do that coming up in just a minute, too. So there's that. It's also Throwback Thursday, so we'll get some old school songs on. Um, okay. Matt Overton plays in the NFL. And Matt, I hear you You say that you're a good singer. Yeah, uh, probably above average, depending on the song. What song? Because we're going to test this out. Oh, Matt okay. Overton plays in the NFL for the Indianapolis Colts. What song would you want to sing? Cause we're going to give you time to warm up. We're going to go find the, the instrumental version. What do you have? Uh, let's do, we'll, we'll do a Jason Aldean song. Which one, though? Oh, boy. Um, Tonight Looks Good on You. Okay, Ray, if you can find... And start warming up. We're gonna be. I'm not gonna do it cold. Like maybe half hour or so. Yeah, sure. I'll drink my coffee. Get warmed up back yeah. here. Tonight looks good. Oh, you got. Yes, sir. Let's you go. find that instrumental. Yeah. All right, Matt Overton. Because <laughs> he was saying he was a good singer, right? Yeah, he said. And I said, "What is in your wheelhouse?" He goes, "Man, my wheelhouse. If I really try, I can really nail some Jason Aldean." We're gonna be honest with you, Matt. <laughs> oh. And you did instinctually to go. Yeah, I'm a pretty good singer. Okay, Matt Overton. <laughs> Deep Snapper for the Indianapolis Colts is going to sing some Jason Aldean coming up in a bit, and we'll see really how good it is. What if he's really good, though? Like, right? That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Could be. That'd be awesome. All right, we'll do that in a minute. Mr. Bobby Bones. Coming to you, Amy. The 
Brian and Dirk Bentley aren't worried about making like an Oscar type mistake when they host the ACMs this Sunday, partly because they've dealt with mistakes on live TV before, but mainly because they have a bar backstage to help them with nerves. So they're just going to, I guess, drink whenever they're backstage and flow right through it. But they don't give away awards. They wouldn't have an Oscar type mistake. Yeah, I guess just a mistake in general. Like, that mistake there was a wrong envelope. Like they're not having yeah, to do they're that. Not doing that. Because the they would for sure screw that up. We know them both. They would for sure <laughs> screw that up. Yes. Well, they said last year, you know, they had a little mix up at the beginning of their, you know, the awards last year because the camera guy cut to something too soon. But they just said they go with the flow. They're going to do fine. They're not worried about it. Jay Leno is returning to the Tonight Show as a guest. The longtime host will sit down with Jimmy Fallon for the first time since he left the show in 2014. Jay's going to be on April 6th when Jimmy tapes in Orlando. So if you're a fan, definitely probably should mark your calendar, DVR, do whatever. Okay, I mean, you know, do people die. still DVR? Yeah, 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 yeah I guess. Yeah. I, I watch stuff online though. Like, really? Clips. If it's something I care about, like I don't care about that. But oh. if I were going to watch that, I would just go Google Jay Leno on. Well, you would Jimmy care Fallon. if it's David Letterman. Yeah, because I like David Letterman. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jimmy Fallon's getting beat by Stephen Colbert now. I really? Saw that. But here's the thing about shows in general. Uh-huh. Fallon will come back and win again. Everything ebbs and flows. Okay. Like there, even with this show, there are times where we're like in ratings heaven, and there are times where it's like. Yeah, and it goes up and down all it when it forever will, and when it's good, it's amazing, and when it's bad, it stinks. But Jimmy Fallon will come back up. I prefer, it, it, they're both good shows. Okay, yeah, cool. Go I'm on. Amy. That's your thirty second skinny. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I'm such a late night television fan. I have a Jack Parr microphone in my uh-huh. house, and so I used to go to the. Oh, I'm such a nerd. But I used to go to the library and watch the black and white film strips of like Jack Parr and the old Johnny Carson black and white shows and. John, even the Johnny Carson shows when it was color. And then I was a little young for Johnny Carson, but all those shows, I would just study them. Mm-hmm. Loved it. But I, you know, nerd. I used to also go to the library and chat in chat rooms before they were cool. Oh, boy. <laughs> On AIM? <laughs> no, because there wasn't uh, immediate back and forth. You would go and you would get in a chat room and you'd send a message, push enter, and then the page would update. Oh. oh, and then I have these little girlfriends I would make. I was no. I was like seventeen. I'd drive a library, mm. and then we'd send pictures of each other through li- like envelopes and like letters, like a pen pal. Yeah, but you meet in a chat room and then you start whatever. And then I would always send my picture, and they never reply after that. Oh mm. man, that's the old school Tinder. That's Swipe like back right. in the day. Swipe <laughs> left. I would write a letter, put my picture in it, put a stamp on it, lick it, send it to Wisconsin or wherever it was going, and I'd be like, can't wait for my letter back. And then they would see my picture and never oh. message me back. Or maybe they were just intimidated by your. Or maybe their parents awesomeness. caught it. <laughs> yeah, like who's this never boy know what from happened, Arkansas dude. that you're uh, chatting with? I don't know. Dad could have intercepted the letter. That's true. That's, that's it. That's what happened, Bobby. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, you're Come good. on, don't be hard on yourself. Yeah, you're I'm awesome. just playing the averages of my life. <laughs> what kind of picture were you sending at this point? <laughs> me, like a school picture with it, like a little tie that said "proof" on it. Oh goodness. Yeah, Ray, I'm, go- <laughs> I'm going to Vegas. <laughs> maybe it was that. <laughs> I'm going to Vegas. Uh, let's see. I'm in Bakersfield on Friday night doing two stand-up comedy shows. Then I drive to Vegas on Saturday. And so I'm there for the ACMs because I get to present on TV. Like, it's crazy. And so Ray's like, hey, take some money and gamble for me. I don't gamble anymore. I used to gamble way too much, and I stopped. Just I don't, no more gambling. Is it against my gambling to gamble for someone else? Like, that's the question. Is it slippery slope? Because if I go in, boys, I might go in. Yeah. Thoughts, Amy? Well, hearing you say that, I'm going to advise you not to do it. If it's a slippery slope and it might pull you back into gambling, then sorry, Ray, don't do it. Eddie? No, I think this is definitely something you need to do. Oh, I need to it's do it. It's definitely your do for it in your life, and thank goodness Ray offered. Lunchbox? I think you need to help a friend out. Ray is your friend, and he asked you to do him a favor, and you're going to be there, so you just do it. And, I mean, you put some shoes with good traction so you don't slip. Hey, you know, that's slow. Ray, what's the deal? How much money do you want to give me? I want to give you a couple hundred dollars, and because I'm not going to Vegas. Yeah. I don't have access to this. You're going to be in these casinos. Just swing by a roulette wheel. It takes one spin. Does anybody else want to pull in on this? I'm in. I'll go in. You mean like give you money? Yeah. <laughs> if I'm going to do it, we might as well go hard. Let's go hard. Let's do it. How much? How much? I'll, if Ray's doing a couple hundred, I'll do a couple hundred. I'll go 100. I'll do, I'll, Everybody's got to do the same or nothing oh, at all. Oh, come on, boys. I'm not, got a I'm not the accountant. Ray, you're, you're, Eddie, you're doing a couple hundred. You're no, in. You spot me a hundo? No. I'm well, you so guys let me know. split? Like if Bobby's doing the gambling, but it's with their money. Oh, no, it's how, even. 
See, he's 50, not taking. 50? Yeah, he's not taking any of our money. No. Oh, you just give it right back to yeah. them. You're just doing it for the fun. I'm like Robin Hood. I mean, I probably jump in with some of my money too. For getting yeah. 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 No, you're not doing do that. Let's, Let's do it. Do it. Hey, Let's and do you know it. what the bet but is? I only go red. 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 Yeah, only red, go red. 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 How do you feel about? It? And I, and I can like let's just pull this cash out right it's now. It's like all ones. I can. Yeah, it's it's like ones and <laughs> it's seven ones and a five. He's like, I'll give you a couple hundo. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. Yes. We need to have. Uh, Matt Overton, do you want to know this? What's that? Matt, Ray, check with him see if he wants to see okay. this. He's, he's practicing. Oh, boys, I'm about to go crazy in Vegas. Oh, yeah! my God. How awesome is this going to be when we win this money? And, boys, he's back. And I'll put it live on uh, Wait, let's don't, see, don't say like that. Facebook Live. You can't say that, though. What? I don't think you can. Yeah, or you just can. do it on the sly. No, well, but I can tell our listeners. It's not like casino, casino bosses. Are yeah, li- they might be. We are. They might be. Vegas. You know, but they don't know which casino he's going to do. And they don't know me. Nobody knows okay, me. Okay, all right, all right. I'll take my glasses off. Okay, <laughs> it's true. No, but it's like you putting the mask on. Yeah, you, you got to tell me what time you're doing it and what day. Yeah, I'll tell them. Oh yeah, man! Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> this is great. Okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yes. All right, all right. Yes. Maybe I do it on Instagram. I don't know yet. All right. We'll figure out which platform. Okay. Because if our Bobby Bone Show page is a show page, I know. I can do it on my personal Instagram. But that would just be you. Mr. Bobby Bones. Yeah, but that's, everybody can watch the live feed. Yeah. And then Whatever, it disappears dude. after. But yeah, and then no one has any Let's proof. Let's do it. Okay. Bobby Bones, everybody. Transmitting across America. This is a Bobby Bones show. Come on, Bobby. I was asking you guys what songs you have on repeat right now. I'll go to Eddie first. What song in the last 48 hours or so have you and played like crazy? This is due to me, the family, the kids. All of us love Body Like a Back Road. And so it's over and over again? Oh, my goodness. And the boys never stop. It took me like six weeks. <laughs> I love- There's that. Let me go over and talk to Ramona. Ramona, how are you? I'm good. All right. What song is it that you just you play over and over again? You're like, man, I need that one. Walker Hayes, You Broke Up With Me. Yeah, that's a good one, too, man. Whoa, girl, simmer on down the notch. Ain't nobody making you watch. Me get my phone, get you on. No, girl, can't touch my good as gold. I know it's difficult to see me on the road. But hey, you broke up with me. Yeah, what can I say, babe? You broke up with me. I was listening to Ryan Seacrest yesterday, and so his show comes on after like hours after us, they're in different time zone. And so I'm listening and I'm like, man, I gotta learn some more of this pop stuff a little bit because once I was talking about Black China, I know who that was. Can't believe you don't know her. So they were playing this song called Issues, and I put it on my Snapchat yesterday, and then I, it's easy to remember. And so it's by someone named Julia Michaels. Somebody look her up. She's yeah. a huge writer. Is she like... Kind of cool, huh? That's cool song. I didn't know what it was, and I had to l- hit up that iHeart. Yeah. She's 23. 
Okay. And she uh, wrote uh, Firestarter for Demi Lovato. I don't know that one. Sorry, and Justin Bieber. What did she write for Black China, though? Nothing. For Mi- Miss Moving On for uh, Fifth Harmony. Don't know what that is either. Okay. Do you know that song? You don't judge me. I don't well, know the song. You know, Sorry, Justin Bieber. She wrote that one? Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Is that Baby Don't Like You, Mama Don't Like No, you? that's because I'm too late to say sorry. Oh, that's a good one. Right? Is that how yes. Hmm. Uh, lots of people are calling in. Oh. What? Got some Britney Spears stuff, too. Really? Uh, Maggie in Nashville. What song you got on repeat right now? Hey, I have on repeat, Worth the Wait by Miss Lindsay L. Worth the Wait. Never heard of it. <laughs> Never heard of it. Yeah, it's about this guy who, like, really dragged this girl along. That's Whoa. not true. Whoa. Wait a minute. Whoa, hold Whoa. on. Maggie. Slow yeah, your roll. I thought you'd never heard of it. Wait, I have. Now, now it hits me. <laughs> Maggie. I did Bobby. not. I told you this story. Lindsay L., my girlfriend, put this record out called Worth the Wait. It's fantastic, by the way. I hope you download it. And if you don't, whatever. I don't make any money off of it. But here's the thing. I didn't date her, not because of any dragging along. I told her we can't date because I don't need other radio companies or satellite or Spotify penalizing you for dating me. And I was like, for, in her best interest... But it was like bribing a baby with candy. No, just because she says that in the song. Dang. Stop reciting uh-huh. lyrics, Maggie. You can't. This is the problem with being the subject of a song. I've now realized what it's like to be a subject of like Taylor Swift song. You know, <laughs> everybody gets mad because Taylor Swift writes a song about him. And it's a good song, but people interpret it wrong. Well, you have a good one. And Lindsay. Ah, I have a good one. Look at her being nice after she drives no, me through the mud. you do. I'm just saying. Oh, a good one. I think you may have a good day. You may not have a good yeah. girlfriend. Well, you have, a, you have a wonderful girlfriend. It's okay. We're Team Lindsay. Stop with that. All right. Thank you, Maggie. See, now, everybody, this song, Worth the Wait. It will be worth the wait. It's a great song. Worth the wait. It's tarnished now. To push this heart beyond itself, we pass what it you did. I'm crazy, crazy. That's just what you do. Uh, Santa underscore Marie says Adam Craig music just to phase on repeat right now. And this is a jam, too. It's like, I just like the blues country. Like, I love that these two together. I'm a blackjack label. You're a classic glass of red. Like, this is a jam right here. Someday, someday, baby, you're going to break up and see. There ain't ever going to be a forever for you. I love music, man. I, it makes me happy. Lunchbox? Uh, I'm not really listening to music right now. <laughs> you give it yeah. up? You check in and out or what? I check in and out. There's nothing really catching me right now, so I'm just kind of on the <laughs> chill. Yeah. On the chill. Yeah. What's well, like the last song that you played, though? Because yeah, I know you hit the channel. Like on oh, okay, you want to know what? You want to know what? Uh, My Hometown by Charlie Robinson. This is a Texas country song, and it's like... My Hometown. Town. That's a good one. If you ever get out west someday, he was and sna- you're feeling like slowing down. Singing this on his Snapchat I'll be around, yesterday. around uh, my hometown. <laughs> That's pretty that awesome. In the- I like that you know that song. Hey, we, hey, to LaGrange, we worked 80 hours making time and a half, but LaGrange is too dang hot. So we drove back home at the end of that week, and we spent it all on... Beep. Beep. Can't say that. What is that? Hot? Uh, what was it hot? Hot. On... Hey. It oh, rains with hot. Pot? Yeah. Oh. Um, so I'll see you in Houston. Yeah. If, if I, I ever get, get out, out that, that way, way, I'll meet you in, in Dallas. Dallas. But I won't, I won't have long, long to stay. Yeah, <laughs> we're awesome. If you're ever <laughs> out west, west um, <laughs> and you feel, feel like, like slowing down, down I'll, I'll see you around. Hey, round I went to college. Okay, okay. no more. <laughs> no no more. Third me to. <laughs> no more, no more. Hey, but they didn't ask Matt my Overton. Friends. Matt Overton plays in the NFL, and he works in our show. He says he's a pretty good singer. This reminds me because we're terrible singers. Um, oh, we are? Shoot. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Ray, do I have this instrumental up or no? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, let me get my lyrics. Hold on. Oh, you need a lyric. Okay, so Matt oh. Overton claims he can sing. <laughs> and I'm not saying you can't sing. Is he coming in? Yeah, do we want to do this now or in a minute? Yeah. 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 Okay, we, have, we only have like two minutes. Oh, so well, let's give a minute. Let me tell you what happened yesterday because he was singing. I go, man, you sing as bad as I do. Okay. And he was like, honestly, dude, I'm above average singer. Okay. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, when I really try, I'm definitely above average. 
And then so I was just baiting him. I'm like, oh, really? So what would you say your wheelhouse is? Yeah. He goes, Jason Aldean. I can, I can do Jason Aldean really well. Yeah, and so I was like, Maybe okay. Maybe he can. What if he nails it? Matt Overton, who plays for the Colts, Indianapolis Colts, is going to come in and <laughs> sing. And we'll be the judges. Because we, th- we don't think you think you're going to be an artist. But if you can sing above average, that's great. Yeah, I just want to beat Lunchbox. No, no, no. You said above oh. average. I know no, I'm not above average. you said you were good, too. No, I said in my head, I sound good, but when I hear it back, I'm like, that's pretty terrible. Like, when I listen to that segment back right now, when I'm like, my hometown. You're right on, though. I, I know that I'm going to be awful. He's going to come in and sing. I can't wait. Okay. Let's go. Oh, see, he's I like yep. this. What do you think and, he's going to be? And I have you. Look, you look good tonight, right? No, that's not it. That's no. you look good from Lady A. Uh, oh, tonight looks good on you. That's what we're doing, right? Yeah. That's, that's your jam? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You gonna come, all right, we'll do it in a minute. Lady A comes in, too, in about 45 minutes. And instrumental here. Song? Oh, it's going to be good. All right, we'll come back in a second here. Matt Overton's going to sing for us. Matt Overton's over there clearing his throat. We got Matt. You have about three and a half minutes before you're on. Oh, we're good. Yeah, you're good. You like? How do you do vocal warm ups? I have no idea. Oh, just like this. Like my girlfriend taught me this. It's like go. Uh, right. Oh, that's because good. Before she performs, if she does over and over again. She'll go to the side and go. So do that and then do re mi fa so la ti do. It's just do re mi fa so la ti. Do, do re mi fa. Do re mi. Do yeah. So do, just what you can say. You can say whatever you want. There you go. <laughs> Matt's gonna try to sing Jason Aldean in a second because he claims he's a good singer. So we'll get to hear that live. That's in like three minutes or so. The iPhone. If you iPhone says hey you have an upgrade, like hit it because it's giving you more space. Do you guys see this? Oh no. If you have an iPhone, it's iOS iOS. What do we call it? Ten point three. So it's a new storage. It, it, the amount. Cause, I'm gonna tell you. I take a lot of pictures with people, mm-hmm. and they're like, "I'm oh, phones full of pictures." And I'm like, "How's your phone full of pictures? Like, how many pictures? I think I take a lot of pictures, but my storage isn't full." Yeah, maybe you just have more gigabytes, or something. You yeah. know, they have that red phone too that you can buy. But here's the thing about the red phone: you still got to put a case over it. Ah, so then it's so not it red anymore. Red, but right, like red I have too. a red phone, but it's actually a black one, but it has a red case, so it looks oh, like yeah. the red phone. Yeah. Ooh. Like my phone's rose gold, and I love that, but I have a case on, so you can't even see it. Right. Mm-hmm. Here's the story. What would your last meal be if you were on death row? Because they talked to a bunch of people, mm. and a lot of them were like foods that they were really allergic to, so they could finally have it. Oh, that's interesting. Which I thought was an interesting yeah. thought. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like a lot of prisoners, though, they go for KFC or like mint chocolate chip ice cream, like their favorite foods, like prime cut steak, lobster tail. But then a lot of people answered, well, listen, I can't eat bananas, so I'd have a lot of bananas inside of this, or something they've always been able to. They can't eat? Yeah. Yeah. Peanuts or something. Yeah, which I thought was... Yeah, that is It makes sense because you want what you can't have. <laughs> For sure. We all want what we ain't we got. got. Oh, that should be a song. It is. Travis Mattis. Oh. And then Jake cut it, cut it oh, too. Oh, that's right. Jake only that's cut right. it too. Yeah. So, last meal... Go. Okay. Um, for sure, this chicken casserole that my mom made growing up. Mine are all like family stuff. And I'd have that. It's amazing. It has mayonnaise and all the goodness. Oh. oh, it's so good. <laughs> and then a side of my family's like mac and cheese recipe, all the dairy in the world. And it's so amazing. Lunchbox? Chips and salsa, queso, chicken enchiladas, and dessert, cheesecake. Dang, you'd roll straight Mexican wow. into New York. Pretty yeah. legit. Uh, Eddie? Oh, pepperoni mushroom pizza pan from Pizza Hut, and then a number one plain with cheese and mayonnaise only from Whataburger. Toasted <laughs> buns on both sides, please. How you don't have an endorsement deal with Pizza Hut, I, I, have no, I, I don't know, know, dude. I mean, that's that's my You love jam. it, and you talk about it. Like, how you don't... Because I do stuff with Cracker Rail sometimes, <laughs> yeah. and I love Cracker Rail because I love chicken fried steak mm-hmm. with white gravy. That'd be mine. Chicken fried steak, white gravy. Fried okra, yeah. corn. It's like the Arkansas meal, the southern, you know. That would be mine. But Good stuff. You should, man, somebody call Pizza Hut and tell them Eddie wants to Yeah, like, Pizza talk, Hut, what up? Eddie wants to talk business. For real. Do you I, say that 
the, the crust? Did you go deep dish? Did you say? Yeah, pan pizza. Oh yeah. no, yeah, you got to get thin. Yeah, I no, love that's thin. It's my last meal. No, but I'm, but I'm, I'm changing it. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm ordering wrong, so I can have some too. Okay, that super thin crust of pizza yeah. is amazing. Yeah, I mean it's good, but that pan. That deep it's dish. The, the crust fills you up too much. I know. You can't enjoy the other stuff. You okay. like bite into it and the grease just like. Oh, it's the best. <laughs> All right, so Matt Overton works on our show in the off season. And so Matt Overton is the deep snapper for the Indianapolis Colts. And he likes to learn different things during his off seasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's a pretty admirable trait. And he's like, hey, I want to learn radio. So yesterday you guys were hanging around the studio lunchbox. Yeah, and I, he was singing a little bit and it sounded awful. And I said, <laughs> man, you're as bad as I am. Yeah. And he goes, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm, when I sing for real, like when I take it seriously, I am definitely a better than average. And I was like, oh, really? So what's your wheelhouse? And he said, Jason Aldean. When I do Jason Aldean, I sound really good. So I was like, okay. I just kept it in my head, and I was like, let me send Bobby a little email and be like, hey, Matt Overton thinks he can sing. This guy thinks he's a better than average singer. Because when I hear myself, I'm like, oh, I'm doing really well. But when I listen back, I realize it's pretty terrible. But every time I start singing, I'm on beat in my head. Okay, so I'm going to put this on Facebook Live, too. So... There you go, Matt. Get oh, warm, buddy. Not. But he did do what most singers do whenever they're not very good. Like when we used to have like American Idol tryouts. Well, I'm just getting over a cold. He said that. He goes, oh, I got oh, a little cold. Yeah, allergies. Going it's nasally right now. <laughs> so sometimes allergies help you, though. Yeah, it might. And I was drinking right. coffee. I think you're supposed to drink like whiskey and tea, right? Is it the thing? I don't know. I don't know. I've don't never know. been a singer. All right, Matt. So <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm not even going to ask you to go a cappella. I'm going to play the Aldine music. Okay, thank oh, you oh, for that. Oh. For Tonight Looks Good on You. Are you ready? Here Let's go. Let's eat. Come Matt, on. Let Matt Overton singing. You uh, tonight looks good on you. I gotta get this on. Warming up. <laughs> you ain't got a dress that I don't like. You ain't got a pair of jeans that don't feel just right And there's not a minute in the day And that you don't knock me out, you don't blow me away But girl, now that the sun's gone down Whoa, 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 looking at you right here and now Baby Something about that southern sky Sit behind that moon It goes perfect with your eyes Girl, tonight looks good on you Something about the way you're smiling Making them stars fall right on you I just gotta tell you, baby Tonight looks good on you Wow, okay Let's talk about this for a second Come on Oh, you, you want a little more? Yeah, just a little bit. Just okay, I'll give you just a little more. All right, Matt over from the Colts. Now, it's feeling it right now. Here we go. And I can taste the midnight on your lips. It makes me just want to lean in for another kiss. When, oh, jeez, I messed that up. Okay, all right, there it is. Matt over to everybody. Clap your Woo! hands. All right. Yeah! That was the rock and roll version, guys. Uh, lunchbox. Your thoughts? <laughs> that was brutal. You thought you yes. Did. Why would you rate it one through ten? I give it a th- four. Six. A four. A four. There's oh. no way he's better than average. Not a chance. Okay. Um, let's go over to Amy. If you're just t- tuning in, this is Matt Overton who yeah. works on the show in the off season. Yeah. Plays in the NFL. Um, Amy, your thoughts, Matt Overton. Better than average. Yes. Yes. Like, I was so impressed. And you what? were even, like, working the crowd, and there was time. You hit certain notes, and you were just into I it. I had no coaching, too. Just imagine if I had a coach. I, wow. I, I, yeah. I, I can't. I, you can't imagine. I can't imagine. <laughs> I mean. What, what do you give him? Man, she said we above, went average. Through, above average. Above average, so I give it that a seven. What? Seven? seven? Wow. Yeah. Are you serious? Wow. Yeah. Wow. wow. Hey, throw a number out there, buddy. I mean, I'm going to go... Six, because yeah. I was more impressed. Yeah, it's yeah. better than what I thought. So I think a lot of it for me too was expectation setting, and I was like, "Oh boy, this can be terrible." And you weren't terrible. 
Right. Thank you, Thank really you so much. Terrible. That makes me feel really good about myself. I would give like, I like, like on the Matt Overton scale of what I expected, I would give him a seven. Yes. Right? Yeah. Woo! Like you're not trying to be an artist. No, not at all. If are I'm you on the series, you are giving him a yeah, seven. Yeah, yeah. Guys? Like if we were Listen, out, and if you were out and I was on a karaoke yeah. stage, we I would be... dominate and owe the crowd. I would yeah. just, I would just let them. I would soak stand it up in, and I'd be like, you know? "Tonight looks good on exactly. me." Exactly, <laughs> and I'd make eye contact with some of the hotties in the crowd Be- and like, better, yeah. "Listen." Uh, and on Facebook Live, people are saying better than they expected. Yeah. Definitely not good. No, absolutely not. But not as bad as Lunchbox said. Yes. Yeah, better. Just than give average. me low credit. Always I hating on me, man. Like, no, no, I'm not hating on you. I just didn't. I mean, Lunchbox, are you jealous? Oh, oh. now we have be, the reason. What is there to be jealous of? <laughs> I'm, I'm in my stream Matt right Overton? there. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. All right, but I posted it. I mean, if you missed it, congrats, congrats, dude. Boy. They, I, I, I thought you guys were laughing at him just like I was because I, I mean, I was laughing at myself doing it. We too. were laughing and surprised. It was so good. Oh boy! Yeah. Good job, Matt. Yeah, hey, Matt yeah. Overton. Yeah. Are you? What number are you? Forty-five? Is that right? Yep. Colt forty-five. Col- like the Colt oh, liquor. Colt forty. Oh, yes. I never put that together. You're number forty-five of the Colts. I bet you that's a hard number to get, right? Because I bet to be Colt forty-five. See, I chose. They gave me the options of forty-five, forty-six, or forty-seven, and I don't know why I chose forty-six. And I'm driving, moving from Omaha to Indianapolis. I'm thinking, like, why did I not choose forty-five? Colt forty-five. Duh. Makes so much sense. It's awesome, right? And I showed up on my first day back in 2012, and they just so happened to change my number to 45. It was meant to be. It was oh, fate. Oh, wow. Wow. Call 45. Awesome. There you go. Call 45. Wow. Matt over. Yeah. Tonight, yeah. buddy. All right. Lady Annabella, man, about half an hour. All right. Hold on. Bobby Bones. Bobby Bones Show. Lady Annabella, man, about 20 minutes. I like when this song comes on. I always say, since we're in radio, we hear these songs a lot. When songs are new to us, they're exciting. But it, I think it would be like working at a, a like a Hershey factory. I love Hershey's, but if I worked at the Hershey factory, I'd get tired of Hershey's after exactly. a while. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's like after you hear a song a hundred times, you start to go, all right, I can't wait for the next new song. You get tired of songs mm-hmm. on the radio. Oh, that's because we, we, we see you hear them all, all the time. But when this song comes on, like it's my jam still. Like, hey, who that the like, come in a little bit. It's rare that a song has longevity, though, where I still like it. Because Dirt on My Booth has already been number one, and it's so already good. done. It's still the jam. Oh. And this comes on, I'm like, turn it up. <laughs> Other than that, I get tired of songs after the hundredth listen or so. But Dirt on My Boots is a jam, too. Been up since the crack of dawn. Just trying to get paid. <laughs> than a hundred songs. I can't find no shade. Just two more roads. Anyway, all that to say, Lady Annabellum in 19 minutes here. My stepdad's on the phone, Arkansas Keith. Hey, good morning. Oh, you're cutting out. Hey, where are you right now? Oh, I'm like Washington. You know how that is. So he texted me and said he's doing a lot of driving today. People often, when you say you work at the park, like people ask me all the time, what do you do at the park? Like, what's your job exactly? Well, uh, right now I'm doing cleanup. Getting trash and those kind of things, but later on in the summer I'll be on the mowing crew. We'll be mowing, be, uh, cutting your ass, just taking care of the parks, man. You know. So does that mean you're not getting to fish every morning? Uh, I'm not getting to fish. And how much does that hurt your heart? Very much. <laughs> <laughs> because. But I am off on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, so I catch it up then. So you're off every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Correct. And of those three days, how many days do you go and fish in the morning? Uh, all three of them. <laughs> well, of course. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. My bad. What, what else is there to do? <laughs> he also said he was listening to Matt Overton sing. What did you think about the football player singing earlier? I thought he was really good. I say kudos. I yeah. give him an eight. You give him an eight? Wow. 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 Lunchbox said he was really bad. Well, Lunchbox is, no, he can't, just because he can't sing, don't mean somebody else can't. You know what I'm saying? That's true, oh. too. Uh, mm-hmm. My stepdad, Arkansas Keith, is on the phone right now. Hey, let me ask you this, because, I don't know, you've met these guys briefly, but, like, you listen to the show, like, what do you think about Lunchbox, just from hearing the show all the time? Uh, he might be a little squirrely. <laughs> squirrely, what does that mean? Uh, nuts. You're nuts, okay. <laughs> <laughs> is he a guy that you'd hang around with, you think? I would like to party with him, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. What about Amy? What, what do you think about Amy, about listening to her? Amy, she's sweet. 
I like Amy. Yeah. Kind of dingy, ditzy, but yeah, I like her. <laughs> I like her. Arkansas Keith. <laughs> well. Okay, so okay. Do, do you know much about Eddie? I don't know a whole lot about Eddie. Just yeah. From what I don't know him on the show. Yeah, so. He seems pretty cool. Yeah, like cool, like laid back? Yeah. Yeah, it is a good dude. I like it. And what, and what about me? What do you think about me? Like, not show, just in general. Like, what would you tell people about me? Just from, you know, life. You're full of energy and you enjoy life. Hmm. Wow. Enjoy hmm. life. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Correct? <laughs> yeah, I mean... Bobby, uh, comment on the you enjoy life thing. Please. I enjoy working. Yeah. No, that's life. Yeah, work that, is life. my life is work, and I enjoy working yeah. and and going out and doing comedy what about and meeting the listeners. Successes and, that have come along with your hard work. I hate success. I, no, I'm terrible. Uh, I hate success. Yeah. So you, don't you get enjoy to do moment. what you like to do. That's for a right. Living. Come on, man. That's exactly. That's <laughs> what you, we strive to do. It's not about money. I don't. I'm not saying it's the money, Arkansas Keith. I'm just saying that sometimes we get on to Bobby, or we I we want to encourage him to enjoy some of the awesome things that he's gotten to do. You he, want me to enjoy things though that I don't particularly enjoy. Well, you like you're, you're trying to force on. enjoyment onto me. Okay, sorry. I'll stop. <laughs> like you're like you need to enjoy these things. What if I just enjoy going on the road and performing and working as hard as I can? I know you do. That's important. That's great. Then but you're weird. No, it's That's some of the good. things that you've uh, accomplished. You just kind of push forward. You're like, not good enough. I've got the next big thing coming up. I've got to work towards that. Maybe there's a balance you I don't need. Enjoy. But I'm gonna tell you. But I'm gonna stop forcing you. I don't want to be forcing you. Arkansas Keith, my stepdad, told a long time ago when we were when I was a kid, he was like, listen, find the job that you love to do because you, you love to do it mm-hmm. it's so much easier to go to work hey did you love going did you love working at the mill or no i didn't really like it <laughs> it's work you know it's a job i like the people but you know i didn't really you know i'd rather be out fiddling around in the woods and that kind of stuff you know but fresh fish would have been a perfect job for me <laughs> <laughs> and yeah but why don't so you you don't want to try that like making any money fishing Nah, it's too old now. Yeah. All right. Wyatt, well, thanks for listening. Tell everybody we say hello. Hey, man, you guys take me a request today? Yeah, what do you want? I want to play for Shannon and take this job and shove it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if we have any Johnny boss? Paycheck. <laughs> That's your boss, <laughs> Arkansas. Wait, who? <laughs> Who's Shannon? Who is Shannon? Uh, he works with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's Johnny Paycheck, right? I'm just going from memory? Yeah. Johnny Paycheck, yes. Yeah, hold on. Let's, okay, let me see if I can find It'll take me a second. <laughs> I, I can play some of it here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, hey, I got it for you. Arkansas Keith, have a he'll good morning. He'll be listening today. He'll, be, he'll probably be listening. So. I'll, I'll play it right now. Okay, do it. All right, here, there's my stepdad. All right, see you later. Have a good morning. Uh, thanks. All right, bye. Uh, here you go. Old bye. school time. This is a th- it's Throwback Thursday, right? Bobby Bones Show. Throwback Thursday. We're going to be a little late on Tell Me Something Good and Lady A's out there. <laughs> but when he hey, asks, got to do it. Here we go. Take this job and shove it. I ain't working here no more. A woman done left, took all the reason I was working for. You better not try to stand in my way as I'm walking out the door. Take this job and shove it. I ain't working here no more. All right, everybody from Lady Annabellum is here. Everybody say hi to Lady Annabellum. Hi, hi. Lady Annabellum. Hey. Well, hello. Hi, guys. Hello. Oh, I have a lot. We have a lot to talk about. Let's start with Charles. Yeah. Because Luke was in yesterday. Oh. Now listen. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I don't know what you want to say about yikes, this, but yikes, Luke yikes, says yikes. he because we're all going to Vegas. Okay. And Saturday night, just as a precursor here. You guys and me and some other friends were doing a um, party for a cause show uh-huh. for charity. Sunday night, we're all going to be on the ACMs. Mm-hmm. We're all hanging out. We have a big group of friends, right? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. It's going to be awesome. But Luke comes in and goes, let me tell you my Charles Kelly blackjack story. <laughs> he says it's on the air, right? right? In the, like in the morning. Oh. And he says that he gets this t- table. And uh-huh. he's like, it's only for rich people. <laughs> And it's the only time he's ever got like this really rich. He's like, yeah. he gets a private room and something, yeah. but he said he got this super rich person table. Yeah. Yeah. And you get invited. Yeah. And you're not in the best circumstance when you show up and the, you're dropping your chips and the dealer yeah. Yeah. smarts off to you. Yeah. And you pop back at the dealer pretty hard. Yeah. Well, you know, to me, it was like, we're, we're there. There's nobody else in there. And 
I'm the, you know, I want to spend a little bit of money, and you know, I, I, I will say this is pretty late. This is pretty late, so I was I was a little tipsy, like four p.m. And he just he was <laughs> on the other side yeah. of four p.m. Yeah. He said just one of like the snarkiest little things, and I said, "Oh, oh, I'm sorry. What, am I am I slowing this, this up for you? It was something like that. Like I wasn't moving fast enough for him. I said, oh, "Am I slowing the game up for you?" I said, "I'll, you know, obviously, kind of just being sarcastic and a little snarky back at him," and Luke. Just was like Luke's all about mojo on the table, and he was like, "Charles, you just messed up the mojo. You got to get out of here, or whatever." And I don't know. It was it was it was pretty funny. Well, I thought well, that's what, it, what you said. I don't know what I said. Okay, that's fair <laughs> enough. If you don't know what you said, I don't know what I said. But I thought I thought for a second the story was going to be every year. I run out of money. He said that too. He and said I, every year you have to borrow money from him. I have to borrow money from him because he has this thing called a marker, which my business manager would never in a million years <laughs> let a person like me have a marker, which is kind of like your bank says, you know, we're, you know, it, whatever he pulls out, we'll take we're it out of his account, which right. is just <laughs> absurd. And so I always know he has it. And so when I, when I, when I've pulled out my max for the day at my ATM, I always go, Luke, spot your boy, a little cash. And he does every year. And, this particular year, he was kind of down. I remember, and he was like, I-, "I need it. I can't. I can't do it." And I got like, and I was, I again had a little too much to drink, and I got kind of upset at him. And Wait, it was one of those things. You got mad at your friend because yeah. he wouldn't you lend wouldn't you lend money, money to gamble because he was down because <laughs> yeah. you don't want to take like, a credit I was card. Like, I'm good for it. He <laughs> kept saying, "Charles, Charles, call your banker." <laughs> Just call it's your like, banker. He wanted like, me to call my banker. Charles shows up like a spring breaker and only like got... Like a college kid. Yeah. <laughs> with a debit card. He, he called me up. <laughs> he, he wanted me to call my banker at 3 in the morning. First off, I don't know my banker. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, you know, like I got like, like my banker on speed dial. Like, Luke obviously, Luke doesn't realize that he's, he's, a, he's in a different sphere of cash flow you know i'm one third of a band and we do solid but luke is like you know <laughs> luke's all of luke luke's got yeah. luke's yeah. all of luke and luke is luke right. Luke's doing stadiums you know so when luke sits there and like you know i think he forgets that that he's on a different level so like money is not an object to him at all sunday you guys are playing the acms yeah do, are you saying what you're doing yet or yeah, is we can, secret? i mean i, I Probably no lie that we're going to do, or no secret that we're you know we wouldn't do our new single. But this is definitely going to be our biggest like performance we've ever done on an award show. Of course, the song's got horns, so you can assume that we have some horns on stage. It is the most massive thing we've ever put together, so we're kind of excited about that. We've always kind of done more, just kind of I don't know. Yeah, well, you always just try to do right by the song. I think you yeah. know, depending on what it is and. And I think this one just calls for a, l- a little bit of a party between being in Vegas and, and what what the song is and how it makes you feel and production. Um, it's going to be big. So Sunday night, ACMs, uh, there's that. Let's see. Uh, let's talk about if you're in Vegas and you're listening or you're going to be out for Party for a Cause April 1st. My uh, birthday party. Your birthday party. Yeah. I'm, I'm calling it that. When When is your birthday? April 1st. Oh. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the second. Oh, wow. Oh, that's my wife's birthday. We'll have, yeah. Dang, it's like so birthday party yeah. for here. Uh, so you guys are playing that, and I'm hosting, and it's you guys and Kelsey and Kip and Pasley. Yeah. yeah. And so, and it's for a great cause. It's a joint. Yeah. yeah. Can it be our joint Hold birthday up. party? It can be. I, you know, joint. anytime you guys want to include me, I'm, I'm happy I mean, to be included. I was just trying to think of what could be fun. Like, I know it's a big room and a bunch of people are coming, but I was like, is there a way to, like, drop, you know, at the Oscars, they dropped candy down from, like, in parachutes down from the ceiling? Like what do you throughout want to the show, cupcakes, duh. Ah, cupcakes. Yeah, <laughs> a bigger parachute for those. Right? And let's talk about this tomorrow. Tickets go on sale for your Nashville show, which is always a big deal. Yeah, because here's the reason why it's so, such a big deal. One, it's a home show, mm-hmm. but two, because you get to wait, you get to get in your own bed and go do a show. And mm-hmm. people like randomly, who knows who shows up? Like, it, but two, Nashville's hard. It yeah. is. It really is because everybody in Nashville is so jaded because everybody's in Nashville. Yeah. We used to kind of skip Nashville in the early days, but now we want to do it. You I have mean, to be you have big. To do you have to be big, or th- you can go play any city and do that same size place. Yeah. But you have to be even bigger than that to do yeah. it in Nashville. But you know what, though, I think though now because Nashville is getting becoming such a giant tourism, um, you know, place that I feel like that there's a lot of people that literally will base their trip mm. to Nashville off of a show at Bridgestone. Totally. You know, so you might have like a bunch of people because I remember at the last one we did. 
um, you know, especially in our meet and greet, we had all kinds of fans from like Australia and all these, you know, random places that based their Nashville trip. They're like, we wanted to come to Nashville and see a show, and we saw that y'all were coming and playing Bridgestone. So it's kind of cool, you know. You're telling people listening right now to ch- make their vacation plans, to buy, to buy yes. tickets tomorrow, yeah. Yeah. and yep. make their vacation plans yep. to come to and watch the Lady party A. At Dave Haywood's house. That's right. Staycation at my place. Yeah. <laughs> Airbnb. Yeah. Interesting. So you guys, when you it, it's you had to all become adults now. Like, you guys were kids, and now you're all adults, and you have your own, like, set. Because I imagine at first you guys were very close when you first started the mm-hmm. band. Mm-hmm. Way closer than you are now, because it's like us as a show. We've been together for, Amy, how long have we been together? I've been with you 11 years. Oh. And Lunchbox, been how long? 13 years? Yeah. And we used to, like, go on vacations <laughs> together. And yeah. Now yeah. we kind of have our own lives. Cause yeah. Now it's like, eh. We've all kind of adulted. We've been together forever. It's like, you know what? <laughs> I see you enough. Yeah. You, know, you do you. <laughs> very close, but right. we spent a lot of time. Of you guys, though, who's like, who's got the biggest house? <laughs> Where did that come from? That's so I'm setting it up. I'm setting it up. Yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. random. I, honestly, I don't know. Maybe maybe Dave? I don't, I don't know. Is Dave's is pretty big. Dang. I have an Hillary's unfinished basement, big. which makes my square footage way too much. But it's just an unfinished basement that you don't Dang. use. Uh, that's what the, that's why I want the after party is then at your house. That's why I was in, the, un- in the unfinished basement. I love it. <laughs> <Yeah. like> <laughs> I was a good before place I to came be. in here. I wanted to like I saw because uh, I don't follow many people, um, but I follow uh, you, your guys' Instagram, and I was cracking up at y'all's picture that you took of where your shirts off. Uh, oh, Granger uh, Smith and the Granger his band. Smith people, and it made me laugh because that's how we felt when we were out there. You know, we had Sam Hunt open up for us a couple years ago on our tour. And, and we all go out there and do these big workouts outside, you know, together in the parking lot. And it was like one after the next of these cats are just... Oh, Sam's man's jacked. They're just yeah. jacked. Yeah. They're like, you know, we're coming out there and we're like, you know, in our short <laughs> shorts, mine a little shorter than they should be. I'm tall and kind of gangly and I like kind of kind of pasty and not in the best, not, not as good a shape as, let's say, I was, you know, when we all kind of started and it was like... Wow, I mean these these guys—they're all like athletes. Yeah. It, anyways, it was I, I could relate. This was long story short. <laughs> you felt more like our crew. Oh yes, yes. than like no, Granger's so. crew. <laughs> yeah. That but, but did, Granger Smith's crew—they're obnoxiously ripped. Well, like and and I, oddly, like I, you, wow. My my biggest, my, one of them. My biggest yeah. question is like, I can't. I, we we ride a lot on the road and we're doing. I, how do you find the time? To make that such a giant focus, because then where do you find time to like be artistic or creative? And if if I get a little drink, a little too we much, just don't want to get too rich. I get a little bit. We don't want yeah, to yeah, get yeah, too much. We buff. like the skinny rock kind of thing. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, that's a good you, point. Yeah. I feel like wait, I feel like I need to. I think y'all all look great. Like this sounds kind of like. No, no, I get it. Because you know, if you're too beautiful, they won't respect your art. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, if our, if our guns yeah. Yeah. are too yep. big, yeah. I get it. Got to be just in shape enough. I had an interesting story about that. So I do a show from my house, and Shane McAnally, a writer, was over at the house. Yeah. We were talking about music. And he was like, Sam had that problem. People thought he was too good looking at first. That They, they uh-huh. were like, yeah. you can't really be that good of an artist because you're too good looking. But now we do. But you guys could fall into that trap. if you Dude, don't I, that's true. <laughs> you know what, though? I mean, it, it is kind of messed up. It's like kind of a double standard. I mean, when I see like a uh, an artist in there, you know, a girl like way too pretty, I'm like, this is just way too put together. It's and like then, it's not. It can't be real. And then who that pretty you know, would work that hard? Like like Ariana Grande. When I first, I was like, she, she's just way too beautiful. And she, I think, is the closest thing to what what Carrie Underwood used to could could sing like. She's amazing. I understand that statement. Carrie Underwood can't sing like she used to sing. She her voice is like. Uh, Fried compared to what? Wait, no, no, not Carrie Wood. Mariah Carey. Sorry. Whoa! I was like, I was like, <laughs> we were all like, wait, what? Watching. That's like, hilarious. What? I meant Mariah Carey. <laughs> Sorry, whoa. That's like, hilarious. I, that's why. That's oh, why I was like, I need you to say that again. <laughs> say it again. Well, I thought those two voices are like, I, Hillary's like, eyeballs were darting around. Oh, yeah. Mariah. Okay. Yes. I was there and I was like, well, we got some serious Mariah Carey fans in this house. I <laughs> <laughs> don't know what I meant. It's, it's Carrie. It's Carrie's awesome. Mm-hmm. Mariah is fried. Absolutely. Mariah Carey cannot sing like she used to right. sing. I mean, I, she's I lost agree. her Agreed. voice. Okay. So that's what I meant. I think we were so Carrie confused. Carrie, you know you can sing your ass off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to go. All right. That's awesome. Woo! You can always count on some word vomit from me. <laughs> um, Dave, Hillary, Charles, um, tickets for the Nashville show. Everybody listening, what's coming to Nashville, or you live in Nashville, they go on sale tomorrow at 10 a.m. Yes. 
Uh, if you're in Vegas listening, Party for a Cause, that is on Saturday night, and that's going to be awesome. And then on Sunday night, watch the ACMs, because you yeah. have to be performing. Oh, and for the national show, we're doing uh, a contest for yeah. some horn players. I saw you guys are yeah. auditioning online. Yeah, yeah. we want to make it a big big thing, you know. Can I, you look good. Do you need to actually not play the horn, or can I just come up and do, go Dude, move? if you want to do you that, we'll totally it. have you come up. With cardboard, we'll too. It, like, yeah. Let's just do that whole thing. All right. <laughs> Lady Annabelle, thank you. Good luck. Um... At uh, life. When, when your yeah. song comes on, though, like for us, and I'll be serious, the, I do keep it on the shit. Because I, I, you know, I hear this music all the time on the radio. Like, and I like country music, but the songs on the radio sometimes I get bored with. Because mm-hmm. I hear them all the time, 72 times a day. Yeah. And so, but when I hear this one, I still turn it up. Like, Thank I, you. I, 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 yeah. Makes me feel good. Yeah. 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 But you know, I hear your stuff all the time. You're like, eh, I hear it yeah. all the time. That's why I am too. Care Underwood music. Yeah, I just yeah, bring yeah. it up. <laughs> Amen. All right. that, is, that was serious word vomit. Like how your mind. <laughs> we was. were just, stung, but you did associate the two, which is a great compliment yeah. to Carrie. That Mariah Carey is one of the greatest singers yeah, of our yeah. generation. Yeah. Well, obviously, Care Underwood hasn't lost her voice, but Mariah Carey literally used to hit a note. I can't remember somebody like like it was a, it was when the I most nuts that thing. That She's one. lost that like high, two whole registers. I mean, she. You know, I'm sorry. I love you, Mariah Carey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye, guys. Oh my All right. God! Come on, y'all. Bobby Bones Show. Yeah. I was going through some old stuff yesterday for my tax purposes, and I've got it done for the most part. I guess there's some things I hadn't tied up yet, and I found an old Bobby Bones Show book. And so what happened was, if you're new to the show, like we were never really a show. We weren't supposed to be a show. We weren't supposed to be a morning show. I was doing this thing by myself at night, and I didn't have any money to hire anybody, so I just started hiring all my friends, and you know, no corporation put us together. It was just a weird thing. that we were, we're just not supposed to be doing this, but now we are, and so I even had to create, and I started you know, my own syndication company to get our show into more markets, and I had to buy this equipment, and I, and I bought this packet, and it was like a, a pitch packet that I would send to station managers, be like, hey, you should pick up our show, and each of us three, this is like 10 years ago, had a page that was talking about them, each personality. And it was like, name, MySpace page. And so Lunchbox's MySpace page was, do you know what it was? Do you know what it was? Lunchbox Kiss FM? No, it was MySpace.com slash LB Loves the Ladies. <laughs> LB Loves the... Dude, I tried to get my MySpace page back lately and I couldn't come up with the name, so now I know. Dot com... Slash LB loves <laughs> the lady. Dot com. <laughs> you mean the dot com. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I'm going to get my page Your back. hobbies were soccer, bowling, picking up chicks, and drinking beer. Okay. Your favorite artists were Robert Earl Keen, Pat Green, Tina Turner, <laughs> The Temptations. They're oh, good. Interesting. And Eminem. Yeah. Your favorite childhood memory was winning second place in the state soccer championship and being one of the little white criminals. Yep. And on top, it said, Lunchbox loves all the ladies. And it all was circled. All the ladies. Yeah, I'm picking up chicks as your hobby. I said already? Yeah. Pick up chicks as a hobby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Here, look, this is it. I put it on my Snapchat. Oh, Pre- my goodness. Look at me. Appreciate you checking that out. Look at me. I missed it. Says. I didn't have time for social media yesterday. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I was busy. Now you got in the way? Snapping no, I only, away. I only got a 52 minute nap yesterday. Oh. But how Man. about that? Look at that old school stuff. That's pretty good. You still go bowling? Man, I not really. There's not really. I don't have a bowling alley by me here. I have not seen a bowling alley in years here. Now there's there's, Wait, there's what? a couple here. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen a bowling alley in years. In years. I haven't. I never drive by a bowling alley anywhere in this city. Is that the only way you go to places if you drive, drive by, by them? <laughs> but, I mean, you got to drive like 35 minutes to a bowling alley. I'm not worth it. Uh-oh. So, yeah. were there's you that. ever a good bowler? Yeah, I was in the bowling club in high school. I was vice president. Wow. Yeah. In our 13 years together, I never knew that. <laughs> yeah. Me neither. Forrest Island was the president. Wow. And I was vice president. And so as the bowling club vice president, what was your job? Uh, it was just really to recruit members and uh, make sure we had the bowling alley reserved for our day that we were going to go. I think we went on Mondays. And Was this like your P.E.? No, no, no. It was an after-school club. Like You had to have a oh. teacher sponsor, and Mr. Harris was our sponsor, and that was the bowling club. Wow. The Anderson High Bowling Club. Yeah. Did you have T-shirts? Uh, no, we didn't have T-shirts. We didn't have that. Did you have your own ball or anything, like shoes and stuff? No, I wanted to get my own ball, but I never did. Because that's legit when you have your own ball. What yeah. would you bowl? Like, what was a good score for you? Oh, like 170, 180, you know, one, I mean, I've, that's on I, a bad day, though, what, right? What's a good, what was, like, your best score? Oh, like 245, 250. Okay, Shut come up. on. 
Shut up. What, are you like, kidding it, me? Was it isn't perfect like, what, 300? 300. 300. No, come yes. on. You're, out, you're, you're, you're telling me I'll never bowl the 250. Yeah. I'm telling you, you couldn't bowl... A 180 right now. Oh my gosh, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. <laughs> wow. Whoa. I mean, have you seen me bowl? No. no. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> this is this has got to be a thing. Yeah, For those awesome. that are coming on the air right now, we just finished a segment, and some of you don't get to hear the whole show, but we just did a segment where Lunchbox was talking about bowling, and he was the vice president of the bowling team in high school. Yeah, b- bowling club. And what was your uh, your high score probably? Uh, 250. And I said, hey, you can, you can bowl a 180 now. And he call, not only did he disagree with me, what did he call me? Idiot. Loud. You're an idiot. Yeah. I mean, guys, bowling was in my blood. Like, we bowled at least three times a week. I mean, I, we You can to- go out right now and bowl a 180. Yes. Let's do it. Okay, yes. we bowl right now. I think maybe next week we set this up. Okay. Like, there's a, a reward and a penalty. Okay. The, let, me, let me see here. Hold on a minute. It, it's hey, a- well, you got my wallet. Ray, <laughs> here's the thing. It's in my office. Is the reward all the money in your wallet? It is not. Oh. Like, we used to bowl and bowl and bowl. I don't There's know how much weed. I have. I okay. The, the fr- my friends, we used to bowl all the time. And sometimes we bowl and a couple times we walked but, out. But, but for you, is bowling like riding a bike? Like, you feel yeah, like... Yeah, you just get right back okay. on. You get so, the ball, you put your fingers in the hole, you, you okay. count your steps. Yeah, yeah. I do, do have motion. cash because I'm going to Vegas for ACM. Yeah. So I throw on some cash. Lunchbox, I have... A Benji, a one hundred dollar bill. Woo! That, I like Benji. Take to Vegas. I will leave here to put it up one hundred dollars. If you can bowl, you can bowl it easily, right? Yeah. How many do I get? Because I need like how many games do I one, get? You have all game weekend to practice. Oh. No, no, no. I'm saying like how many games do I one. get that day? One. One game. One. It's one because you got to warm up. You can no. warm up before it. Whatever. You just get one game because you like, know, like for it to like, like when you're a professional bowler, they don't just go up there and start bowling. They have time to warm yeah, up. You can warm up. You take twenty minutes for a warm up. Okay, and how much do I get? So I will put because I know you you love cash. I love cash, man. Okay, so if you <laughs> I bowl, like that cash, if you bowl a one eighty next week, yeah, straight cash, homie. I will give you. I will give you this one hundred dollars. All right, that was gonna take Las Vegas. With me. <laughs> Thank you. Now, if he does not bowl the one hundred dollars, what what does he have? One eighty, right? Yeah, one eighty. Okay. Because what does Lunchbox hate? Let's let's figure out what he hates. Snakes. Do. Oh, he, he hates no, snakes. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Yes. Now, we're yes. now we're talking. Eddie. If no. you don't bowl the 180, you have we'll get. You have to hold. No! Yes, 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 yes. You have to hold a oh. python. No, 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 no. no. I don't think it's you like understand. A, it's like a ball python. It won't hurt you. No, 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 like He's I don't. Okay, okay. How about one hundred and twenty dollars? Oh, no, I like one hundred and twenty dollars. But that, that, I don't think you understand holding. Take it, the deal or leave it. Like take you, the deal or leave it. Let me take let, the deal. One twenty. Take the deal. Take the deal. Give me my take money. Take the deal. No, you don't get the money. If you win, if you bowl the one eighty. That's get, what I'm saying. Give me the money. Right. He's, He's, taking He's the bet. accepting. Take the deal. Say I take the deal. I take the deal. Okay. Yeah. But I got a question. Go ahead. I have to hold the thing for two seconds. No, 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 no. I, you missed what I said. 60 seconds in your hands. That's one minute. Seconds! That's one minute. I'm, yeah. Oh, my gosh. But you, <laughs> you don't understand. Like, I'm going to drop the snake. <laughs> no, no, you're not. You can't or you don't get the money. Right. No, no. Well, it's you, best to just well, put it around your neck. No, I guess you wouldn't get the money anyway. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, true. yeah. <laughs> that's true. Or the whole thing. Wait, like, no. Because it can eat me. Or we kick you in no. the nuts. Like, that's you know one, it yeah. can eat me. No. Oh, hey, wait, you hear? how many people get to kick him? No. Did you hear? If you drop the snake, we all get to kick you in the nuts. I don't think. No, you don't understand that dropping the snake would not be on purpose. No, That's you have to do real it. quick. You have to, all, dude, you, have, you have to commit yeah, to it. Yeah, commit. You can put it around your neck. No, 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 I'm not putting it hey, around my neck. Have, Yours. No, they squeeze you Lunchbox. to death. No, are you a man? <laughs> yes, I'm a man. I'm a I just sound like you're a man right now. Tell him, Amy. Yeah, you're a man or you're a mouse. <laughs> man or mouse, homie. Yeah. So I'm a man. Okay. Okay. $120 versus holding as Lunchbox is terrified of snakes. A, a ball python won't eat you. Oh, my. No, they eat people. No, they don't. Oh, you can bowl one in no problem. Not this one. I can. Okay. You're a man. Hey, man or mouse? I'm a man. Man or mouse? Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. M A N. What's that spell? Man. man. That's probably like Tuesday or Wednesday if you have to see him. All right. Good. <laughs> We're going to play Dr. Jeopardy because today is National Doctor Day. Oh, yes. Okay. Why are you so excited about that? Because I, I, I'm good at Dr. Trivia. Mm-hmm. Where do you think this is going? Uh, you're going to say, name the famous doctor, and I'll tell you who they are. Okay. Oh. Is that what it is? I thought you were going to ask us, like, doctor questions about blood the vessels. Di- what is it, doc? The disease hypto... No, it's what <laughs> Lunchbox said. Oh, okay. Oh, all right, all right. Okay. 
Okay, I'll give you the description. You name the famous doctor. Real, okay. Real or fiction, okay? Jeopardy style, Amy. Yes, I know. Oh, so phrase it as a question. <sighs> Got it. A fictional teenage physician played by actor Neil Patrick Harris. I'm in. I'm in. For, I'm oh, in. you got to write it down. I thought you were just going to Amy first. It's everyone, right? Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, like Jeopardy. They write it down, y'all. Okay, okay. No, they buzz in. They yeah, write they it do. down on their little screen, though. No, that's only for Final Jeopardy. Oh. Yeah, that's yeah. Pictionary. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm that's, ready. That's Operation. Go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Amy. Who is Doogie Hauser? Lunchbox. Who is Doogie Hauser, MD? Eddie. <laughs> Who is Doogie Hauser? <laughs> Good. Question number two. Name that famous doctor. Today's National Doctor Day. He became the first hip hop billionaire in 2014. Yep. I'm in for the win. I'm in too. Amy? Who is Dr. Dre? Lunchbox? Who is Dr. Dre? Eddie? Who is Dr. Dre? Good, very good. Everybody's, everybody's kick it, kicking it right here. Joey Tribbiani's character on Days of Our Lives. I'm in. I'm in. I am in for the win. Amy. Who is Dr. Drake Romero? Mm, sorry. <laughs> and, and correct. Lunchbox. From- Who is Dr. Galakowitz? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's from a beer commercial. Oh. Dang it! It's from a beer commercial where the guy gets off the elevator and the guy oh. holding the sign and he goes, yes. he goes, I'm Mr. Galley Weekitz. And the guy goes, Dr. Galakowitz. He goes, yep, that's, that's me. <laughs> that's right. Good memory, lunch. No, terrible memory, lunch. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> I've seen it. Uh, All right, good. what's the next question? Uh, no, Wait, Eddie, what's your Eddie, answer? I don't have it. What Dr. Minori. What would you write down? Dr. Minori. Wait, cl- what is it? Ramore. Dr. Drake Ramore. Oh! Oh, yeah. uh, Ramore. <laughs> Dr. Galloway kids. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Funny. Okay. Um, footwear that is distinguished by its air cushioned soles and yellow stitching. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm in. Wow. I'm in for the win. Wow, you guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah, easy. Yeah. I know my doctors. Amy. Who is Dr. Scholes? No. Lunchbox. What? What is Dr. Scholes? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, it's who. No. That's no wrong. <laughs> it's the company. No. What is Dr. Scholes? Who is Doc Martin? Yeah. 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 Stitches. Yeah. Shoot. <laughs> I should have listened to the whole clip. Hey, what is Doc Martin's? <laughs> no. What is? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dude. He was so for sure, too. Like, I like thought you, just, you were obnoxiously wrong twice in a row. <laughs> <laughs> makes me laugh. Okay. Uh, this, this, uh, he got a start on Oprah. He, the TV host who got a start on Oprah. Oh, that's easy. Go ahead. I'm in. Amy. Who is Dr. Oz? I'll, oh. I'll accept that. What? Lunchbox. Who is Dr. Phil! I'll accept that. There's two of them? Mm-hmm. Wow. Who is Dr. Phil? Yeah, that's correct. What is Dr. Phil? <laughs> <laughs> or where oh, is wow. Dr. Phil? He's still on TV. Why is Why? Dr. Phil? <laughs> A lot of questions here, guys. This is Dr. Phil, guys, made me think. When? When, when is when? Dr. Phil? <laughs> How? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's You're the game over? Bugs. It's over. And yeah, I won with Dr. Mo- with Doc <laughs> Martin. Doc Martin. <laughs> yeah! Here, let's do a special ICU. This is like a bonus one. Because this is kind of cool. Bobby Bones. Recognizing people doing cool things. It's ICU. Yesterday, the University of Tennessee set a world record for the largest human letter. 4,223 students, faculty, staff, and alumni gathered to break the record. And they did a T. It took 4,000 people. They, wow. They, they built a 4,000 person T. Isn't that crazy? Pretty awesome. Where did they find room for that? Uh, football field. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. The, uh, the previous record was the Queen's University in Canada when 3,300 people made a giant Q. Oh. USA, USA. Yeah, that's what I'm USA. talking about. That, aim, that's what I'm talking about, girlfriend. Mm-hmm. All right, there you go. I see you. I see you. I see event. you. That was I see you. Bobby Bones show. They're making these YouTube videos, and kids click them because it says, "Hey, watch." I'll make up a name. Herbie the cartoon, and so a kid loves Herbie, watches it, and all of a sudden, Herbie turns into like a really like 
stabby thing or like disgusting teeth ripping out thing. Why would they do that? They're tricking. Yeah, what's the point? It's terrible. Why would they do that? It's terrible. Who's doing it? People are setting up fake YouTube accounts. Children are being tricked into watching sick videos disguised as their favorite cartoons. (gasps) It's not funny. No, it is funny. YouTube channels claiming to show popular characters actually filled with very disturbing scenes. Yeah, no, it's not funny. That can be really, really, really hard for a child to see, and they're not even trying to see it. Exactly. One episode of Peppa Pig... That's that's our jun- like that's what Junior Junior loves. Starts watching Peppa, and then all of a sudden it goes to somebody, and their teeth are getting ripped out. Okay, no. <laughs> okay, no more Peppa Pig. Yep. Well, well that's what's going to happen. Everybody's going to be paying lots of Peppa Pig. I mean, the the deal is like we the censoring like YouTube and just internet videos for kids is hard enough, and now they're tricking us. So you have to watch them all the way through before this is you let not them watch. Be good. It. You don't have time for that. Do nope. they still watch this? I find them fascinating. The, the egg, egg videos? videos. Yeah. Man. And I found a store that sells them now. The eggs? Yeah, it's kind of hidden in the in a weird part of town. I found them. There are these videos on YouTube where all these hands just go down and open an egg, and you just watch, and he pulls out a treat, and he goes to the next egg, and opens the egg, and he pulls out a treat, and it's just like, wonder what's in the next egg. The, they're like a, an hour long, the and, videos. And all they all it is is two hands going to a basket, grabbing a plastic egg, opening it, and pulling it. It's like a little fire truck. Wow. Yep. Let's do another one. Wow, it's a ball of yarn. Yep. Wow. And I'm amazed, too. I can't. I start watching them. I can't stop. What I don't understand is how this person came up with this. Like, what in his mind or her mind thought, I'm going to put all these eggs in a basket and people are going to watch me open them? My I- answer would be, there are so many people trying so many things that this was something and it caught on. It wasn't someone was like, this for sure is going to work. Yeah. Well, there's something psychological about it because every kid gets hooked on it. No, no, not kids. I, <laughs> okay, I had to watch like 12 mind. extra. I just wanted to know what was next. <laughs> yeah, because like, you know those baby Beethoven mov- sh- movies and stuff that kids are like fascinated yeah. by? Like a lot of research has gone into like What's that? cognitively how kids respond watching that and they love it. So what, I feel like the dog? Baby Einstein? Yeah, oh, Little Einstein. Baby Beethoven, it's not yeah. Little Einstein. Okay, yeah. I was I thinking the dog. <laughs> <laughs> little what Einstein. Is it's classical music based. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but they do little things on the screen that like trigger the baby's brain and they want to watch it. But it's like, it's not just by, some Some of it maybe is by chance. But so I it's feel brainwashing. Like, it's, like a lot of research went into like, this I is agree. what babies like. Well, research goes into, this is us and why we like that show. That's yeah. true. It's all, goes, it's all formulas. Yeah, I guess so. Really? Yeah. Like you're a formula. I only have you here because you're part of a formula. Man, that's cool. I'm yeah. a math problem. No way. Nobody spent money on that. You definitely have money. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Hey, nobody's, we, got, we don't have chairs. Hey, nobody's been money around here. Uh. All right. Amy sent me this story about an alarm, alarm clock app that guarantees that you get up in the morning. It's called I Can't Wake Up. So when the alarm goes off, you get a puzzle. And as long as you're working on the puzzle, the alarm's music plays softly. It's like, meh, meh, meh. <laughs> the second you slack off, it starts to get louder. If you ignore it, it gets louder and louder and louder. And you can make the puzzles harder. And if you don't put it together, it just continues to make noise. Yeah, it's genius. It's like the alarm clock thing where it, when the alarm would hit, it was like this little, and it'd fly over it somewhere in the room. Yeah. And you'd have to get out of bed and go get it. That's very smart. It's uh-huh. awesome. But if you want to download the app, and again, I'm not endorsing it. I've never even seen it. Amy just sent me the story. It's called I Can't Wake Up. Eddie, can I see your phone? Eddie what? is the latest of all of us. Yes. Oh, you're going to see your phone. But you're yeah. Good. yeah, you shoot about not 90%. Uh, 90, yeah. I'm like three, maybe late three days a year. A week? <laughs> no. <laughs> Try to leave the kids at home when you go grocery shopping. Experts estimate that for every minute you spend in the store, you spend $2 on unplanned purchases because you're taking the kids. Oh, yeah. And it's, you don't give them everything they want, but you do give them stuff. It's the hardest thing ever. Like, I always want to take the kids to the store, but it's guaranteed that I'm going to, like, take something home for them. Like, maybe at least 10 items each. Whoa. Oh, I'm, I'm telling Ten. you. whether Listen, it's not expensive. Whether it's marshmallows, whether it's bananas, whatever, they always want something. Do you do the grocery shopping? I do most of it. Really? Yeah, because my wife does a lot of the ordering. She does like the pickup at Walmart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just and is I popping just, in to pick up whatever. And I just know? roll okay. up. Oh, no, Amy's looking at you and yeah. is she calling you out on something that I don't understand. So oh, go, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She does the online ordering where you like, you know, how Walmart or yeah. Harris Teeter or whatever will have like, you know, you go through scrolling and click, oh, I want this, I want this, me, this, and then the, the people back it for you at the store and they have it waiting for you and you pull up like you're at a drive through and they load up your car and it's great. So that's pretty much done. Like you just drive up and you're taking like credit that. for yep. shopping. No, no, no. You, you go to the store for the, oh, we're out of toilet paper. Can you run get That's that? That's what I do. It's yeah. on the way home. Like, hey, can you stop and pick up this? Yeah. And like, I get the text, voot, 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 and it's about 20 items. But for the most part, I usually just back up the rocket and pick up the car, the groceries over at Walmart. So you know any laundry lately? 
Um, I did a load. When? Like I transferred the load from the washer to the dryer on um, Monday. Yeah. And yeah. That, that's all? Yeah. There's a, there's a mountain going on that, that needs to be folded, but I'm not doing that. And it's on our couch, too, so it's not a good good look. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to touch it, though. I don't want to start what? that. Good husband right there. Yeah. Bobby Bones, everybody. Transmitting across America. This is a Bobby Bones show. Come on, Bobby. ACMs are Sunday night on CBS. I hope you watch. Selfishly, I hope you watch and you see me give you guys the clenched fist. That's my hello and thank you to everybody listening to the show. Can't wait. And so I can't like take my hand and go, why not everybody? Because I would. But yeah. then they'll never have me back. I'd be cool about it. But I want to be super cool, but I still want everybody to know that I appreciate them. Because without the listeners of the show, I just would not be able to do stuff like that. So, that's when I get up there, I don't know how I'm going to do it. But when I get up on stage, it'll be very subtle. But that's my hello. I don't even know what I'm doing for the awards. I don't know what I'm presenting. If it's a musical act I just I would love for them to let me open a card and give an award I just think they'd probably give that to the big boys oh I don't know you could do entertainer of the year mm. I think they let the big boys do the <laughs> card I would love to do a card award like mm-hmm. that would be my dream that's awesome for this is to open go whatever I'm just lucky they put me on the show like I'm not even gonna lie like I got it, it's awesome and it's but man if I get to give an award so there is like a thing for that strategically like you don't feel sometimes they just who do we want to do this? Draw I don't a know. name? I have a very like oh, I don't this even know award needs why to I got on the I don't know how I got on the show. Yeah. Like I, I submitted you. They don't put radio people on stuff. Yeah. And for some reason they put me and I'm very grateful. And I'm still like, wow. So I, I want the listeners to like know that I'm thankful to them and I and watch because I'll get up there and I'll just be like, You'll see me just make a fist. And that fist is love all you guys. Shout out. Nobody else doing that for their people. That's right. That's well, right. That that we know of. Unless they're doing subtle stuff, too. <laughs> no, they're not. They don't worry. I, I talk to everybody, and they're not doing it. Okay. They don't care like I care. I have, hmm, let's see. Eric Church talks about how Killer Word is nominated, and it strikes a chord with how the world is today. Yeah, I think the society we live in today, if you don't hear this song and look around and see how it relates to the world we live in, then I, I can't help you, you know, because it's it's so true with everything that's going on. Is um, it's one of those songs that I think strikes a chord that I know in my career I've, we've never struck, and and I hope it strikes something um, for a lot of people that you know, in a positive way. I don't want to spoil anything, but I'm gonna say this about Church. I reached out to him about a week ago for some personal, and it'll come up on the show. And man, what I mean, that, it's a good. Eric Church is a good dude. You have his phone number? It doesn't matter how I talk to Eric Church. That's Whoa. messed up, dude. You know how much yeah. I love All that guy. All I'm saying is he came through in the clutch for me. Dang. And it's going to – eventually huh. it'll be public. But I was like, hey, I need to help with this. It's not for me. It's not it's for, for you. somebody else. And, I, and he was like, I can do you one better. Oh, wow. Wow. Like, because like, Eric's mysterious. And I, I make the word – he just does his own thing. He didn't care. Like, right? He didn't – right. not out doing a bunch of interviews. Mm-mm. But – He's always there to help. I've never reached out to Eric and he said, nah, I can't. I'm busy. And you guys are going to be blown away when you hear about it. <sighs> are we going to be a part how of it? Are we, how will it, we hear about it? It'll be soon. Like, I mean, all I want to do is, I'm just saying he's a good dude. Like, a lot of people don't know a lot about church. Because, oh, yeah, because he's mysterious. Because he's, yeah, he's like Spider-Man. Right. Like, what's under those ray like, wait a minute. You'll never know. Who's that masked man? It's just Eric Church, mother. <laughs> huh. It's Eric Church. Yep. You son of a... <laughs> I have a beep. I guess I, I stopped using the beep because people thought I was really cursing. No. And I really... I don't curse in my real life right. at all. Like, I don't say a curse word, and all of a sudden, I use the beep, and people are like, well, ain't that some... You know? Right. But I don't curse, and people think I curse. That's just how I do it. So, you got rid of the beep. I just forgot to use it anymore. Okay. You know? So, kiss my... You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, ACM's Luke Bryan gets to hang out with his friends. Here's him talking about that. Certainly when I was hosting with Blake and now with Dirks, is it puts us in a situation where we're hanging out with one another and we can go to dinner and go uh, do, do things that we wouldn't necessarily be able to fit in our schedule. So, you know, that's the main thing. Get out there and enjoy hanging out, hanging out together and um, start building the, the intro of the show and, and making sure that we're doing a great job hosting. There you go. Sunday night, CBS, Dirks and Luke. I'm going to give a shout-out to everybody listening to the show. I don't know what hour. I know nothing. 
and then nothing. Well, we're going to watch the whole thing. I know thing, that one's yeah. that, So I, I walk the red carpet as a presenter, right? Which is cool because usually I walk the red carpet as an, the idiot who they just need people on the carpet. <laughs> So this year I get to walk it as the idiot who gets is the presenter. Yeah. Ooh. I'm still gonna go way early because nobody ever cares to talk to me, ever. And it's so, like, I walk out because they they say okay, you walk in the carpet, and there are a hundred people with cameras, and everybody has these microphones ready to interview the stars. And I walk out there, and I'm like, okay, does anybody? Want? And nobody even looks up because it's awkward. It's like when the guy is at your window and he's holding a sign up, and he's like, hey, can I have five up for five bucks? And you don't want to look at him because you don't have any money. Mm, yeah. You know that awkward feeling. Oh yeah. That's how they feel trying to, when I'm at the red carpet. Like I'm standing right beside them and they won't even look in my eyes because they don't want to interview me because yeah. cause they don't care what I have to say. And so I just walk slowly down the line. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, Lunchbox. Are you taking your piece of arm candy with you on the red carpet? Lindsay? Yep. His girlfriend? My girlfriend. Hey, still arm candy? <laughs> uh, no, and here's why. Good. Because I. Am, you want the spotlight? Uh, it's all about me. No, no she, uh, really why. she's hosting. The official ACM red carpet for, like, Xfinity or something. Like, oh wow, that's yeah. awesome. She's actually so hosting? she's gonna interview you on the red probably. carpet. Probably she'll probably be the ah, only one. That, wow, she'll probably be the only one that cares. Well, that was clever. That's I had nothing good. to do with that. I didn't even know she was doing it. That's awkward. I saw it at, like uh, on like billboard, oh. and it was like the official ACM host. Because she was like, I'm, I'm working on the red carpet, and I thought she was like going out and like I don't know. She didn't know what she was doing. Yeah, and she, and it says. Lindsay L host and I was like that that's cool well there you go now you have somebody on the red carpet that will actually to. care to talk to me yeah. I'll just stay and talk to her the whole time <laughs> <laughs> the hour interview alright that's that any other questions no that's it okay. what this mean means what up oh listeners? it means you got a fist up, oh man? you're like power to my people that's that's exact yep you're welcome kind of yeah <laughs> Show. All right, thank you to Lady Annabella for coming by today. You can hear that. Go to iHeartRadio and search Bobby Bones Show on demand. Also, we'll put up a note at bobbybones.com because they've moved our podcasting stream. Like, if you listen on iHeart, it's still there. But if you download it on iTunes, we moved it to a different feed. Oh. And yesterday, people were like, where did it go? We'll put a note up explaining that. Okay. So, that happened. Matt Overton, who plays for the Indianapolis Colts, sang for us today. A little Jason Aldean. You can, you can hear. I think it's a pretty good show. And there's a couple new Bobby casts from this week, a show I do from my house. One with Aubrey Sellers, and then one where last night we're rating scary movies and talking about comedy. And, you know, it's just a show that I do from my house. Uh, and Mike D and I were just chatting it up last night. So you can search Bobby Cast. So that's it. We'll see you tomorrow. We got dance party. Dina Carter comes in tomorrow with her guitar. It's a 20 year anniversary of Did I Shave My Legs for This, the record. So, like, Strawberry Wine's on that and Dance and so many songs. So we'll see. I think tomorrow's going to be great because I like Dina a lot. So that'll be tomorrow's show. Have a good one. We'll see you guys on Friday. And you want to hang around or you want to go home? No, I think we can go home. Okay. People waiting for more. All right, all right. Bobby Bones, y'all.